We're live with the Gators in South Carolina. Stay with 10 Connects after the game. This is Tim Brando in New York. There's Tim Tebow. He and the number one Gators of Florida meet South Carolina next. Vern Lundquist and Gary Danielson, along with Tracy Wilson, will join you from Columbia right after this. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Miller High Life, LG, Jared, the Gallery of Jewelry, and by Chick-fil-A. SEC on CBS this afternoon Columbia South Carolina and it's the undefeated Florida Gators against the South Carolina Gamecocks Williams Bryce Stadium on an absolutely glorious mid-November Saturday afternoon good afternoon everybody Bert Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson Urban Meyer said this week this season has been a season of stuff he was talking about distractions. They're undefeated. There's been more good stuff than bad stuff. South Carolina columnist this week said the Gamecocks must avoid the November unpleasantness. They've had a bad habit in recent years of losing late November games in large numbers. They've lost their last two, so the whispers have started. Florida's trying for an undefeated season. South Carolina is game at bowl eligible, trying to improve the level. Well, Gary, if they're going to win this, they've got to get big players to get big plays. Yeah, I think you're right. You watch Florida, 19 wins in a row. And, you know, they don't worry about system. They don't worry about their coach. Florida coaches on the other side. You must have athletes to match up. And Alshon Jeffrey right there is one of those special athletes that can force the Florida defense to commit to him. He's big, he's tall, he's fast, and he can catch the ball anywhere near him. You need that type of special athlete to compete. On defense, they got Eric Norwood. He has to be a big play guy on defense. And for Florida's defense, they get Brandon Spikes back after the one-game suspension. Well, it's huge for Brandon Spikes. He's comfortable, most comfortable, on the football field. But there's plenty of other athletes on this Florida defense. Jermaine Cunningham is a star in his own right. Ryan Stamper is one of those players that makes plays. Carlos Dunlap and, of course, Joe Hayden. These guys are experienced and they do not back down because they've seen it all. This game and all SEC college football games are brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. It's absolutely perfect here in Columbia, South Carolina on the 14th of November, 74 degrees, calm winds, and a forecast of severe clear. Florida leads the series and they have won 17 of the last 18 that uh, South Carolina win in Steve Spurrier's first year as the South Carolina head coach South Carolina won the toss they have elected to receive and so Caleb Sturgis kicks off for the Gators Sherman is the deep man Bryce Sherman oh boy how about that for a game opener all five six 155 pounds 
a 34 yard return and Joe Hayden knocked him out of bounds. Well, he's one of those speed guys, a track guy. And again, if you're going to have success against Florida, it's more than just how you line up. You have to have the speed to match him, and he has speed. Steven Garcia will open as the quarterback for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Patrick DeMarco is the fullback, and Brian Maddox is also in the backfield. They'll bunch them up. We'll talk about these unusual uniforms in just a moment. Here's the snap. Garcia looking left. He avoids the tackle behind the line of scrimmage and throws it away. This is the Wounded Warrior Project weekend. For more on that, here's Tracy Wolfson. Well, that's right, Vern, to show support for our armed forces and those injured in the line of duty. South Carolina wearing camouflage on their uniforms today. On the back, in place of their names, is a core value, duty, honor, courage, commitment, integrity, country, and service. Three honorary captains were present at midfield for the coin toss, and 250 tickets were given out to members of the military. Head coach Steve Spurrier saying, I hope we will be inspired. Guys? All right, Trace, thank you. Now Garcia up under center on second down and 10. Maddox is the lone running back behind him. Garcia with pressure, it's tipped back and almost intercepted. Carlos Dunlap tipped it. And it was just about going to the south end. Yeah, I think he got it with his left hand. He started out at defensive end and kind of stunted inside. And Dunlap goes six seven, and that wingspan is probably, you know, eight and a half feet or something like that. Starts out one way, comes back inside right into the throwing lane. But you know, that was not going to be a completed pass anyway. There was no one open. Third and ten. Here's Garcia back to throw again, perhaps. Pulls up, lobs it out, it's tipped again, but caught. That will be short of the first down. Brandon Spikes, number 51, tipped this. So two tipped balls out of three plays on offense. Only a three-man rush and not a good sign for this South Carolina offense as they get started. If those eight droppers can get back there with only a three-man rush and pressure, it's gonna be a long day. Spencer Lanning, who does both the place kicking and punting, is on. And Brandon James, number 25, the deep man. It's a fake. Deep left side. It's caught. First down. A flag is down as well at the 30, 43 yard line. I wonder if it was an illegal formation. I'm just wondering. DJ Swearinger, a freshman, caught the pass from Lanning. It's an 18-yard gain if it stands. Florida, I guess, could be in the neutral zone would be the other call. Illegal shift on the offense. More than one man moving at the same time. Never got stuck, never got set for one second. Five drives from the previous spot. Fourth down. Well, you heard it explained. It was a shift. Shane Beamer is the special teams coach, and he had a gimmick set up where you would shift back in the formation and apparently not enough of a delay in the shift. If that name Beamer is familiar, he is Frank Beamer's son and has served with uh, Steve Spurrier for a number of years, Shane Beamer. So we'll try it again on fourth down. Here's landing. Brandon James backs up, fair catch. Hauls it in at the 14-yard line. That's a 48-yard punt, nothing on the return. And the planned fake punt to quick start this South Carolina offense goes for naught. There's Shane Beamer. And on the field, Tim Tebow. 31 and 5 as a starter at Florida. Want to go back to his high school career? Nice High School, he's 56 and 8 as a starting quarterback out of the spread Dempson Rainey alongside it's Tebow keeping going left and he picks up a quick 11 yards wow. he picked up a big physical hit too 
faking the sweep. Remember, Tebow accounted for seven touchdowns last time he was here in this stadium. And I think everybody on this defense knows that if he gets off, they have no chance. And he was hit big time that time by Darian Stewart. And the head was the first part of the body to make contact with the field. First down and 10. Dive play. Couple of yards. Now let's check the uh, Gator offense presented by Chick-fil-A. There's a flag down, a new starter at left tackle, Xavier Nixon. Carl Johnson moves in to guard. You saw the rest. Thompson, Demps, Hernandez, Nelson, and Cooper complete the starting five. Here's Hubert Owens, the referee. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary reference on the defense. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary reference on the offense. The penalty is offset. We'll play second down. No numbers. Well, you know in this football game, the South Carolina defense knows they cannot get pushed around. Pouncey is in the middle of it. I'm and glad. I think a good note. But, well, I'm, they I'm, call it. They serve notice, but no penalty, right? Yeah. I'm glad Tracy explained the no names on the yeah. uniform <laughs> because integrity just threw the first push. Second and eight. Tebow again. South Carolina defense gathers Pepper, Adjaboy, and Melvin Ingram. That uh, right defensive end is going to be a problem. They've got injuries there. Shaq Wilson, Eric Norwood, the All-American. And in the backfield, five backs, Gilmore, Allen, Stewart, Culliver, and Augusti. Third and three, Tebow time, normally. He's not going to run. He's going to throw. And he's got a man wide open. Here's the race to the end zone. Riley Cooper. Touchdown, Gators. That is only the third play this year for Florida in excess of 50 yards. Urban Meyer telling us this week, we need big hits. They just got one. 68 yards. Just a simple little five-step slant play that was perfectly thrown. This was like handing off the baton to a sprinter. No chance on that South Carolina defense. Caleb Sturgis on for the extra point. Chris Culliver right here is trying to disguise for Tebow. He gets there a little late. Here's the slant to the top of the field. Watch, a second too late trying to disguise. That creates the space that Riley Cooper gashes. Tebow does a good job of finding the safety and delivering the ball right on the face mask. Florida with the first strike, 68 yards. Tebow, Cooper, touchdown. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, invites you to celebrate game day moments in the SEC. Life's good in Carolina. Wounded Warrior Day and uh, a large contingent of our member, uh, members of the armed forces are here. Tim Tebow on the sidelines. Six first possession scores, three touchdowns, three field goals. And that one was really something. Gary, take us through it again. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Watch how building a good pass pattern works. This is the slot safety right here. 
Watch what happens with a good pass route from the slot. David Nelson, 83, runs a good route and occupies his man right there, and that creases it for an easy throw to the outside. One safety tries to disguise. The other safety is taken out by a good pattern, well-built and hustled by David Nelson, and then the ball is delivered on time. Here's the kick taken by Sherman at the two. Goes right, little stutter step, double teamed and dropped at the 15-yard line. Omarius Hines, number 82, led the defensive charge. Steven Garcia, sophomore, had a troubled start here with off-the-field issues at South Carolina. Uh, started a couple last year and seems to have uh, matured. And he's had a very effective season. Well, sometimes, why is one team 9-0 and and the other team 6-4? and One team has a penalty, an unnecessary penalty on a 25-yard gain on fourth down. The other team executes perfectly for a touchdown. And that team with the penalty that wiped out the fake punt has a first down now. Maddox tries to dart to the outside. He picks up about three. Joe Hayden with the tackle. Let's introduce you to the South Carolina offense. Up front, Nunn, Chisholm, Jean-Pierre, Johnson, and Eckerson. Alshon Jeffrey at one wide out, Mo Brown, Barnes, the other two. Maddox, the tight end is Wesley Saunders. Second down six. And off left side. Fumble. At the 23. I think Stamper got in on this play at linebacker. Stepped one way and came back the other. There's Dustin Doe, number 32. Let's see how this ball pops out. Boy, it might have been even Ahmad Black that got his helmet on the football that time, too. I think so, Gary. And then Wesley Saunders, the tight end, had the ball fall into his lap. Third and three. Maddox, the running back, alongside Steven Garcia. Three wides to the left. It's Maddox. Might have it. Very close for the first down. Justin Prado and Major Wright there defensively. That will move the chain, first and 10 South Carolina. And we'll introduce you to the Gator defense, ranked second in the country. Dunlap, Tratto, and Cunningham if they go as they go with the three down line. Jones, Spikes, and Stamper. And then in the secondary, you've got Jenkins, Will Hill, Ahmad Black, Major Wright, and Joe Hayden. First down 10, South Carolina in the eye. And Spikes is not out there. They'll hand it off. Right side and not much there. Maybe the lost a yard. Ryan Stamper, number 41, senior, made the tackle. And at least for the moment, Brandon Spikes. Off the one-game suspension for the eye-gouging attempt in the Florida-Georgia game, Urban Meyer said about Brandon Spikes, he was crushed by the event and uh, served the one-game suspension. Now, Jeffrey and Tory Gurley are both on the field, a couple of outstanding young wide receivers. Across the middle, Stamper was there covering, and a flag is thrown. He may have been covering too well. His ball was not thrown very accurately by Garcia, and that almost a poor throw caused the interference right there almost. You can see Stamper is trying to get out of the way, but the poor throw forced him into an interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 41. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Carries an automatic first down. <laughs> Funny sometimes. You know, an accurate throw there probably would not have been a call. Hmm. Ryan Stamper, the senior, having a, a terrific season. Irvin Meyer talking about his senior linebacker. He said when they uh, went to recruit him, they realized he was too slow to play the position, and he said he's still too slow. Yeah. So all, make, he, all he does is compete. Right. And make plays. He's got great ball skills. Yep. First down and 10. 
South Carolina at the 31. They trail by seven. Garcia pumps, goes right, has a man. And it's tipped away by Joe Hayden, who has developed into a terrific corner. You know, he walked on as a, he didn't walk on as a player, but when he walked on the field, he was ready to play as a freshman, and he never seems to panic. I would say that's the one thing. If I was going to give a scouting report to anyone on Joe Hayden is, it's just blase. He, the ball's in the air, and he, I'll bet his heart rate never gets, heart rate never gets over 65, 70 the whole game. Second down and 10 as Hayden makes the play, the former high school quarterback out of Maryland. Second and 10. Again, three down for Florida. Trappe is the nose guard. He gets up. Garcia's back. Screen pass. Tipped, and it hits the receiver in the back. Mo Brown had not turned around. Yeah, but he was blocking, Vern. This was supposed to be a, a wide receiver screen that was thrown poorly. Mo Brown's job was to block downfield. The ball was thrown so poorly to the tight end, Wesley Saunders, that time. Nobody could catch the ball. The ball's supposed to go to that guy right there. Watch, he goes out, and he comes back in, and it's thrown about four yards over his head. Garcia with a poor start. He's one of five for seven yards. Third and ten. Gators showing blitz. They're not. They're rushing four. And that uh, a broken tackle. And it's out to the 40-yard line. Wesley Saunders, number 88. And he surges for the first down. Little hustle play by the big tight end. And you know who else hustled? The offensive line are the guys that actually pushed him over. Watch, it's another wide receiver screen. Coming back inside. Now watch, he gets hit, and those offensive linemen stay with the play and actually, Reggie, actually bush him over. You know what a bush? It's a bush push over the Yes, the it round. is. That was a multiple push yes. push. <laughs> Had a bunch of them in there. That's a gain of 13. Saunders, who complained last week that he wasn't getting the ball enough. Here's the handoff left side this time. And uh, Lawrence Marsh makes the stop on Brian Maddox. Now Brandon Spikes with a short rest. He's back out there now. Well, you know what? I, I, you can see the stats with and without him. I mean, they got great defense even without him. They shut down Vandy really last week. But what I think he brings is more versatility. He can line up at defensive end, and he reads the quarterback's eyes as good as any middle linebacker in college football. Very savvy middle linebacker. Second down and seven. Here's the blitz by Florida. Garcia hurries to his left. Down the sidelines, out of bounds, and they're going to give him a very good spot. At the 45, I think he's got enough for the first down, given where they marked the ball out of bounds. Well, Garrett Anderson, the center, was supposed to come off. There you see it right there on Spikes. He came off late, and Spikes was able to flush Garcia out, and then that's the wild card that Garcia brings to this offense. And you know what? It was a good spot. I thought maybe he'd uh, skittered out of bounds prior to... Gaining the 45, but uh, his first down and 10. Maddox, again, is the running back. Brian Maddox started the first six games of the year and then gave way to Kenny Miles the last four, but now he's back in the starting spot. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Vernon Gary will win today company. for Nebraska. They'll move ahead of Kansas State, who lost at home to Missouri. And here's Zach Lee fumbling into the end zone. It's recovered by Roy, Roy Helu, and Nebraska leads the Jayhawks 7 to nothing. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Second down and eight. The only score in this game, a 68-yard touchdown toss. Tebow to his roommate, Riley Cooper. Up under center. Blitz coming. Garcia nailed. And he's got a man down there. The ball is underthrown because of the contact behind the line. Garcia slow getting up. Brandon Hicks is the guy who got to Garcia. Another one of those blitz Charlie strong blitz packages. Hicks coming from the outside right there. Watch him come inside an overloaded blitz again. When you have two corners that can cover and you feel comfortable playing man to man, 
they are coming after Garcia. They, you know what it looks like to me, Charlie Strong does not want to give Garcia the option to scramble. He wants to hit him early and make him throw early. Now they scurry out of the huddle, third down, and uh, time called South Carolina. Steve Spurrier not happy with uh, something out on the field. So when we come back, it'll be third down, Gamecocks. Get a complete wrap-up of the day's college football action, including expert analysis from Dennis Dodd, online tomorrow at CBSSports.com. Gary, a moment ago, Garcia getting whacked. Well, we talked about defensive coordinator for Florida's Charlie Strong saying, I do not want Garcia running around, and they are kidding Garcia, and he's feeling it. Watch him wince here as he gets up. He had the wind knocked out of him, for South Carolina and Garcia, I hope it's not a, one of those ribs because that just that doesn't go away. It just doesn't go away. South Carolina seven and seven so far. And a reminder, if you joined us late, that uh, the names on the back of the jerseys for South Carolina reflect the commitments of uh, a military obligation, thus the service on the back of this one. How about that? Alshon Jeffrey, huge gain to the 19. Well. The rib must be okay because you literally cannot throw a football better than Steven Garcia through this one. Watch, they're to the outside. Joe Hayden pushes him out and then sinks back, and that ball is thrown about six inches over Joe Hayden's hand. Hayden reaches. Even Steve Spurrier would compliment that throw <laughs> from Steven Garcia, and he's a hard guy to please. That is the 13th play of the driver. This one is. This lengthy drive put together by South Carolina. Here's Garcia with a play fake. He's got a man wide open at the 11-yard line. Toward the end zone. He it's dropped that ball. Jason Barnes. Jason Barnes was on the inside of that slot. It was an unbalanced man. And that, well, you know what? He got his hands on it, and he's out of bounds, I think. So it's going to be South Carolina football. Jason Barnes is on the inside of the slot right there. He just goes to the outside. It's a missed coverage by Florida. Now watch it wide open, and he drops it. But he's the first one to touch it afterwards. Wow, first and goal. Maddox, touchdown. Gamecocks. Maddox is the biggest of the South Carolina backs, 225, and that's why he's starting the game. They pulled. Chisholm on that one and just followed up and Maddox stuffs it in there. Great answer for the South Carolina offense. Spencer Lanning for the extra point. We're tied. A 14 play drive. Remember the hits on Garcia. Remember this throw by Garcia right after the hit. And then this was a Spurrier play right here. Steve schemed this guy wide open. Fortunately, South Carolina for them get the ball back and then they jam it in the end zone, a tie game. This is the scene in the north end zone. Urban Meyer walking and looking up into that uh, throng who are celebrating. Here's a footnote for you. That is the first touchdown given up by the Florida defense in the first quarter this year. Well, what, have they given up six all year yes, total? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, now remember, though, this home field advantage right here for South Carolina. They play their best football right here on this field. Won their last seven here. And they will kick off. It's Adam Yates' kickoff coverage 
has been a serious problem for South Carolina. Here's Brandon James. Well, that's pretty good that time, isn't it? James down at the 23rd. Let's take a look at the loose ball, Gary, That uh, right before the touchdown. Well, a lot of people wondering about this fumble. What happened here? Yes, the ball was loose. And since Jason Barnes possessed it before the fumble and he touched it, once he touched the ball and he was out of bounds, it doesn't matter who got it after that. Jason Barnes has the football, South Carolina football first and goal. And we chatted with Steve Spurrier yesterday, and you suggested they needed to have 65 plays on offense to win. Yes. He agreed. He did, but but if Florida has those one-play touchdowns, <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> Tebow double-teamed, and he lost yardage back to the 21. And, and let's go back, Vern, is why I'm saying that. I charted... South Carolina's games against, you know, they're like maybe their big five teams that they play. Maybe the upper echelon defenses that we watch Tebow run away from their defense. Georgia, Ole Miss, Bama, Tennessee, and Arkansas. South Carolina only averaged 60 plays for the game on offense. That's not enough against Florida. They need 65 plus to stay in this game. Well, here's really bad news for South Carolina. Weak at defensive end already. And Melvin Ingram, who's starting there as a backup, is down. Timeout. NFL Today, tomorrow, regional coverage for you. The league game early at 1 o'clock Eastern. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. Jim Nance, Phil Sims will be at that one. Late game, Kansas City at Oakland. It's the NFL Today, tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern. JB and the quartet. And uh, Melvin Ingram, the injured defensive end on the cart. Yeah, he runs into his own man, Clifton Gathers, number 96, knee to knee. Ouch. And so South Carolina goes with a three down lineman set now as Ingram is helped over to the side. Second down and 12. Tebow back. Under pressure, lets it go incomplete, intended for Hernandez. Tebow, who was sacked four times last week in the win over Vanderbilt and has been sacked 21 times this year. I'll tell you, Eric Norwood, number 40, comes from the inside linebacker and gets around the corner like a Dwight Freeney coming from one side and then inside, Adjaboy gets him. And Cooper's wide open, but Tebow wasn't. No. <laughs> right? Definition of well covered. Right. Cliff Matthews is back on the field now. I'll talk about that in just a second. It's third and 12. Tebow up. Takes his time. Drills it. And it is caught at the 48-yard line by Riley Cooper. Well, one of the main coaching points for Ellis Johnson was we don't want to get behind Tebow. Watch this. Two players get behind Tebow on this in the rush, and that means you're playing 11 against 9. You must stay in front of Tim Tebow because as he runs up in the pocket, he's very dangerous. Gain of 30, first down at the 48. Tebow keeps it, goes over left tackle. And he moves the ball to the 42-yard line. Let's go back to New York and check in with Tim Brando. Vern, you may recall in our game earlier today, Vols defensive linebacker LaMarcus Thompson was taken off the field on a stretcher after a play with 2.40 left in the game. He lay motionless on the field for quite some time. Tennessee SID Bud Ford called us and told us that Lane Kiffin told him that head and neck evaluations on uh, LaMarcus Thompson were negative and he is going to fly home with his team. So good news out of Oxford. That sure is, Tim. Thank you. And now in the backfield, it's Chris Rainey leading to the left. And he might have gotten enough for a first down. Well, there was, boy with the yeah, there was some worry from the Florida fans when Rainey's shoulder was injured. And he's uh, playing. He looks like he might have a brace on that left shoulder. It's a white brace hidden pretty well. One of those gifted little running backs. Mm -hmm. 
It gave everybody so much trouble a year ago. Seems like the league has adapted a little bit to that inside speed this year. 7-7 score, late first quarter. It's first down and 10 after the rainy run. Pouncey will snap it back. But before that, timeout, Florida. So both teams have used one timeout here in the first quarter. Lord is undefeated. Been a lot of pressure on this team. Mentioned at the top of the telecast, Urban Meyer referred to this as the season of stuff. Let's take you through some of the stuff. They began as a unanimous preseason number one. And uh, then a variety of different things. The flu bug, flu bugs load the team. Uh, and they went up against Kiffin in Tennessee, won that one by 10. Tebow suffered the concussion at Kentucky. Will he or won't he play in the game at LSU? He did, and the team survived that trip to Death Valley 13 to 3. Game winning field goal against Arkansas. Tough, tough ball game. Florida fell to the uh, number two spot behind Alabama that week. And then the controversial interception for the touchdown sealed a win at Mississippi State. That was Dustin Doe. Spike suspended after the eye gouging incident. Urban Meyer fined $30,000 by SEC Commissioner Mike Sly. No stuff so far today. Long day. Still, still True. a lot of stuff. True. <laughs> and a clean shaven Brandon Spikes. Up the middle to the 30 yard line. It's Jeff Demps, number two. I think it was nope, Moody. Emmanuel Moody. Yeah, it was yes, Emmanuel it was. Moody this time. Demps was in the backfield. I got another time when they played Emmanuel two Moody. backfield. They actually got a running back, a tailback, and a tight end. It's almost a T formation look for this Florida team that kind of rests his head on the spread. But they're anything but the spread. Look at this formation again. Yeah. Just a normal looking formation, except they do it from shotgun. Tight end, two running backs, and a quarterback. Second and two. Pitch left side. This is Demps, and he's got a first down. Well, uh, Melvin Ingram limped off. Let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. Trace. That's right, guys. As you mentioned, it is that left knee. He's running on the sideline. They're going to try and get him back in there. Also, starting safety, Darian Stewart. He's missed this whole first quarter with a shoulder injury, though. They're going to try and get him back in as well. All right, thank you. And we did see Cliff Matthews back on the field for a brief moment. Matthews, the normal starter defensive end, injured two weeks ago, missed all of last week's game. His backup went down, Devin Taylor. Here's Tebow. Hit as he lets it go, incomplete. Good pressure by South Carolina so far. That was Clifton Gathers, number 96. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Aaron Hernandez was wide open on that play. But you know, for Tim Tebow, 21 sacks this year, 15 in the last four games, and usually it's a Tebow that's giving the punishment, but this year he's been receiving the punishment much more than I remember the last two years. Now coming into the game, he had the 21 sacks, and he'd also carried 155 times. And you see the first uh, three seasons. Last year, 15 sacks for the whole season. The year before that, 13. And this season, 21. Right, and remember, the loss of two tackles for this Florida team. They're still athletic but young. They're playing a true freshman at, at a tackle, and it's just a different football team. There was a five-yard illegal shift penalty against Florida, so it's first and 15. Option, inside give, got it. Seen that a couple of times. That's Aaron Hernandez, the tight end. Well, the scouting report is right on. Aaron Hernandez is the guy they go to on first and second down. They had the play action pass for the sack that was going to Hernandez, and here's the shuffle pay out off the option play inside to Hernandez. Now they gain seven. It'll be second down at the 20 yard line. 7 7 game. Steve Adazio, offensive line coach, and he replaced Dan McMullen as the offensive coordinator this year. Dan Mullen, rather. Here's the pitch left. It's Demps again. He's popped as he gets inside the 15 yard line or right at the 15. Eric Norwood got in number 40. And here's the tough part about playing Florida. 
You get it to third and four and five, and they really have anything they want to call. Now, Ellis Johnson told us third and five, they're 100% pass. This is third and four. It's not 100% pass. <laughs> They can call anything in this situation. Good news for South Carolina. Melvin Ingram back on. And South Carolina calls timeout. They've now used two of their allotment of three. Third and four when we return. williams Bryce Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina. 7-7 ball game. A 14 play drive by South Carolina resulting in a one yard touchdown run. The only touchdown for Florida. A 68 yard strike. They've now moved somewhat methodically to the 15. It's third and four. They have had Gary red zone problems. They have. Now do you do quarterback draw? Now remember South Carolina said they want to defend the box and force the throw. Let's see if they do that. Rainey goes out wide to the left. Tebow back again under pressure. And he fires it too high. Red zone problems continue. Is he holding the ball too long? I don't think on that one. There wasn't okay. a lot of people open, I don't think, on this one. A little bit of a push. He might have been able to dump this ball off a little earlier. Watch him go downfield. Riley Cooper, he could have stuck that ball in there to Cooper. Yes. That was a bad read. Looking at that again, I was actually watching a pass rush. I think he could have thrown that ball to Cooper. They will come back to that play. Caleb Sturgis has had a very, very good year. And it continues. He's good from 32, and he's now 18 of 21 in this, his only season as the starting field goal kicker for the Gators. 10-7, Florida. The Wildcat is coming to Carolina. Dolphins Panthers on NFL Network. Tomorrow, James Brown hosts one of the most inspirational hours in sports television, the Reedy Honors for Courage in Sports, presented by the United States Marine Corps. Past honorees include Muhammad Ali, Peyton Manning, Tiger Woods, and Hank Aaron. And that leads us uh, to a reminder, that fellow is not part. Oh, my gracious. Oh, God, I didn't see him in security. <laughs> a moment ago, the missed opportunity with Riley Cooper. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where Tebow had him deep, I think, in the middle. I don't know exactly what his read was, but Riley Cooper, a good receiver, will go back and say, I got that play. Don't, don't throw that one away. Next time we get down there, we can run that again, and I'll be open. You gotta trust some receivers have no idea. They just they run their route, they look back, they have no idea. Other guys can sense and coach the play caller that next time I got it. Caleb Sturgis will kick off for the Gators. Sherman, again, it's returnable from the two-yard line. He comes left this time and runs into a trio of special teams players for the Florida Gators. Omarius Hines led the way. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports, provided by DirecTV. Well, Steve Spurrier has taken over more of the play calling publicly this week. Yes, right? that's I mean, right. I think he yep. was always doing a lot of it anyway, but I think he's just removed all doubt now and say, listen, I'm going to call him more. But here's his challenge. He knows that they're not holding up a lot on the offensive line. So he has to pick his spots. And he also knows, looking at that Florida offense, he needs plays. He needs 65 to 70 plays to win this game. They went 14 their last possession and got a tying touchdown. Here's a handoff at left tackle. It goes to Brian Maddox, and he runs into Brandon Spikes. Well... Late season swoons. Here's here's what uh, has happened to South Carolina in recent years. Start 7-3. Look at 2007. They were 6-1 and one and lost their last five. 2008, lost their last three. And uh, this year, they come into this game off back-to-back -back losses to Tennessee and Arkansas by enormous margins. 
Second and three. Bryce Sherman, number 22, is the carrier, and Brandon Spikes is right there in the middle. Sherman getting a little more action at the running back uh, spot. Brandon Spikes, and I think again, yes, he's got great size and great technique on that. When you see him take that on with his inside arm as a linebacker, that allows if that ball bounces outside for him to shed and go out and make that toe. That is perfect technique by Spikes. That's the end of the first with our score 10-7 Florida. We'll return to Williams Price Stadium after this message. And a word from your local station. We're live with the Gators in South Carolina. Stay with 10 Connects after the game. This is a day to celebrate the Wounded Warrior Project, and in honor of the Wounded Warrior Project, South Carolina Gamecocks wearing the uh, camouflage uniforms with core values expressed on the back of the uniforms, courage, honor, country, duty, integrity. Their team trails by three. They've got a third down and three from their own 20-yard line. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson from Columbia, South Carolina. Three wide for Garcia. Quick setup. And it's incomplete. And uh, it'll be fourth down, and South Carolina will have to punt. Gary, 10-7, uh, what's your take on how South Carolina feels right now? Well, a little good. I mean, they've shown that they're they're running with these guys. They're making some plays, but some bad, too. They're having trouble, South Carolina, protecting Garcia from the blitz. They've made some key mistakes, and Florida's hit a big play. You know, Florida's not hit big plays against a lot of people. So they're surviving, but I think there's some bad signs for South Carolina early in this football That big game. play was a 68-yard pass. From Tebow to Riley Cooper, only the third play in excess of 50 yards all year. Here is the punt by Lanning. Brandon James drifts back, grabs it at the 25. Comes left, gets some blocks, reverses field. And he's down at the 30. Pretty good coverage by South Carolina. Yeah, a lot of running for five yards. Yes, it was. <laughs> And so the Florida Gators will have the ball 70 yards away with a three-point lead. Another broken tackle. Watch. Oh, I can't believe it. And he's going to score. Man, oh, man. Oh, right in his hands. Oh, baby. Florida, Alabama, December 5th on CBS. Our coverage will begin at 3 o'clock Eastern time on that Saturday afternoon. And it will be our privilege to be there. They'll kick at 4, 10 p.m. Second year in a row, Florida and Alabama have met for the SEC title. Look at this tight spread again. Left side, big hole. Almost dropped it. Chris Rainey on the carry. Chris Rainey. Well, remember Arkansas in the second half, what they did to South Carolina was they started throwing the ball early, but they ran right at them in the second half. There's Rainey going right up the gut, inside Pouncey, Johnson and Pouncey. I think that move of Carl Johnson into guard is helping them a little more beef inside for this Florida offensive line. Now Xavier Nixon is getting his first start, the true freshman, at left tackle. And Johnson moves to guard. One of the Pouncey twins moves to right guard. Here's the dive play again. This is Brandon James. And it's going to be third Brandon and James two. Lottie Ajaboy for the game guy for the tackle. Lottie Ajaboy number 91 with the tackle. Nine and oh, Gary asked Urban Meyer Wednesday on the phone have they enjoyed it he said well yeah he said well have you is there joy in the locker room after a victory and he said well twice yeah georgia and lsu that was it <laughs> twice third and two 
Usually Rick. Tebow time here. Yep. Tebow will flip it out. It's caught. Aaron Hernandez has the first down plus a bunch all the way to the 49 yard line. So interesting. What did defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson tell us on third and short? I am not going to gamble against these guys. Two safeties back. He thinks they might go deep. He was right and it forced a drop off because that was that little play action pass for the quarterback. Tebow's going to come up. Safety back. He dumps it off the races. I'll give him the first down. I don't want to give him a 60 yard touchdown on third and two. Hernandez seven catches last week in the win over Vandy. And now timeout called by Florida. They have used two. So here we are with uh, 12 minutes and 46 seconds to go in the first half. Both teams with a lone timeout remaining. Honor the military. These three guys got the message. They march off in formation. Now back to live action, and Tim Tebow is in the shotgun on first down and 10. You know, um, the injury thing, Alonzo Winfield, number 25, is the third safety in the game. Wonder if they're going to test him deep pretty soon. A young player, not a lot of experience. Here comes the blitz. Tebow back, fires it out right side, caught one on one in isolation. It's Brandon James. And a nice bit of defensive work by Demario Jeffrey, number 33. This was a, 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 a nice job by Tebow getting rid of this football because, you know, the edge players for Florida are not Lewis Murphy <laughs> and Percy Harvin. It's a little different. Percy Harvin, I think, is doing well wherever yeah. he's at. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in the frozen. Well, he's close to the frozen tundra. He's not in Green Bay, he's in Minnesota. Lewis Murphy's doing well. He's uh, out in the chaos that are the Oakland Raiders. Brandon James gets loose first down at the 38 yard line. Well, the guy who's trying to replace Percy Harvin's numbers, and we all knew how good Percy was at Florida, but now. He's kind of showing us he's special, special football player at the next level. Brandon James is the guy that's trying to do it. He's different than Percy. We talked to Urban Meyer and he said, you know, Percy Harvin, he didn't even have to practice the tailback and he could take plays. He just got it. James needs reps. Here's Tebow. Comes near side, caught by Omarius Hines, his eighth catch of the year, number 82. And that will be a first down at the 26 yard line. A gain of 11. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. All right, fellas, the problem for USC this year has been defense here. They can't, uh, Stanford goes hurry up. They can't get their personnel groupings out. And Toby Gerhardt is going to plunge in from three yards out to make it 21 to 7. Stanford, how about that? Back to Vernon Gary. Ooh, yeah, how about that? Wow. How about that? Pete Carroll has never lost a game in November, isn't that so? You know, watching Tebow run here today, I, I do have to say something. He said, you know, we, we've documented that he's taken a lot of hits, but he was quoted this week as saying he's never felt better at this time in a season. And, you know, he looks like he's running with much more authority than he did even the last couple of weeks. It looks like he's fresh to me. Big gain on that first down play, and it's second down and two. Here's the pitch. Perfect option. Emmanuel Moody, touchdown! His first touchdown of the year. 17-yard gain. Everybody does their job on this one. Tebow accounts for Eric Norwood, the end land on the line of scrimmage in the option, and then Moody wonderfully dances into the end zone. Perfect call against the Blitz. Emmanuel Moody out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area started his collegiate career, as a matter of fact, at Southern Cal under Pete Carroll. Was so far down the depth chart, he elected to transfer, sat out a year. He's in his second season. And this one, whoa, 
somewhat ugly extra point. Emmanuel Moody, 17-yard touchdown run, first TD for him this well, year. Well, blitz from both sides. They got the perfect call on right here, and Tebow accounts for Eric Norwood. He does his job, and Moody gets help from the tight end right there. This was the same shovel pass, read perfectly. Hernandez gets downfield, and Moody prances in. Gets it in the end zone and remembers to give it to the official, hug his quarterback and go to the bench. Emmanuel Moody with the 17 yard touchdown run on the option. Remember we pointed out that South Carolina had their third safety at a young player. Now watch the poor angle that it takes a eight yard play into a touchdown. Alonzo Winfield takes a bad angle here overruns it moody sets him up and goes into the end zone for an easy touchdown i'll tell you florida on that drive really kept south carolina off balance and i think steve adazio did a great job of play calling on that drive a little pass a little run they, south carolina never felt comfortable a whole drive dan mullen of course gone people questioning adazio whether he's the guy to call the plays like the last guy yeah that one looked pretty good And so we get set for the kickoff, Caleb Sturgis. That was an eight play drive, 70 yards, 4-10, and Tebow perfect throwing the ball. He's seven of nine now in the game for 142 yards. The big strike, 68 yards to Ryan And, and just as important, already 222 yards of Florida offense with 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Sherman moves up to take the short kick and then is tackled almost immediately at the 26-yard line. Let's go back and spend a moment with Tim Brandon. All right, Vernon Gary, as you know, they close up shop in the Big Ten around Thanksgiving or just beyond. So here's Brandon Sane taking it in from 22 yards out. Ohio State takes a 10-3 lead at the break against Iowa. Win, and it's uh, roses for them come New Year's Day in Pasadena. Back to you. And for the first time since the late 90s, huh? How about that? And they have uh, controlled Iowa, let's say in the last 11 games. First down and 10. Maddox back in it, running back, and Garcia will go from the spread this time. And off to Maddox, bolts up the middle. Nice run, out to the 34. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. It's Mo Brown, major in finance and marketing with a 3.22 grade point average. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of South Carolina's General Scholarship Fund. We had a chance to spend uh, half an hour or so with Mo Brown. He's a delightful young man. Second down and one. First down plus. Maddox and the tackle made by Brandon Hicks but a 13 yard gain. Well this is the veer read option as Maddox limps off on the play. They're going to read the end right here. He's unblocked. You read it you run right by him even though it's shotgun. It's a play that was run in the 60s from the veer option play and he runs right through the tackle of Hicks right there. Bill Yeoman. Bill Yeoman, Houston, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. This was such a huge drive here for South Carolina. They cannot give Florida the ball back without a few first downs. Their defense is gassed and confused. Here's the handoff to the fullback, Patrick DeMarco, number 47. He's got a Florida connection, does the fullback DeMarco. His uncle, Chris DeMarco, PGA golfer, Runner-up to Tiger Woods in a memorable Masters in 2005, and a huge Gator fan from Altamonte Springs, Florida, second and seven. Now Kenny Miles is in at running back. He'd started the last four games. Jason Barnes breaks off wide to the left. DeMarco and Miles in the backfield, second down at the 50. Blitz coming. Blitz effective. Ball's on the ground. Ball's out. Brandon Spikes is there. Did Florida recover? They think so. 
And so do the officials. Yeah, you're right. Kenny Miles never secured the handoff. Remember, the running back and the quarterback are reading. Miles comes on the field. Vern told you his first play. And you know what? Garcia never put it there. I'm going to put that one on the quarterback. Garcia never got it into his stomach. There's no way Kenny Miles could have got that football. He put it on his hip. Brandon Spikes was in the middle of the play. That might have caused problems, too. Watch Spikes get involved right here. He gets inside. He bleats, beats the block by Johnson. And the ball was set on the hip. And Florida has got the football back again. In the first, uh, we saw the graphic briefly. And here's the tackle made behind the line of scrimmage on Tebow. It was kind of you know, interesting, Vern. We talked to Tim on the phone like we do every game. We know we got our direct dial to Tim. We've got uh, we've gotten to know him fairly that's well. Right. Yeah, that's right. And I said, do you think you're any different? And he said, well, you know, I think I'm better. I'm more accurate with the football this year, and I think my footwork is better this year. We're not making the big plays, but overall, I'm pleased with the way I've grown as a quarterback. Burgess, here's Tebow, comes near side. El Droppo. Riley Cooper dropped this one. Yep. Third down. And I guess the other half of it, I asked him, do you feel like you still have to be the emotional leader like you were a couple years ago? Well, he said, I'm trying to play with ice water in my veins, but maybe I need to show more. He's got a lot of guys on this football team. It's just not Tebow's team. He's not having that type of Heisman year statistically like he had a couple years ago. Well, he might have sensed the Heisman with his performance on this field that year, two years ago. Seven touchdowns that day. Five running, two throwing. This one. Got it. First down. At the 36-yard line, it's Riley Cooper again for a gain of 14. Boy, you sure know who he's going to go to the football with on third yeah. don't you? I mean, that is his comfort zone. A big target. Hard to play bump and run coverage on Cooper. He manhandles, pushes off that time. Not going to get called. That's a great route. Both guys fighting with their arms. Tebow delivers the ball inside. Good route by Riley Cooper. Man-to-man -man coverage to the outside against Swearinger. Thompson goes deep, and he's got a man open. It's incomplete. And Riley Cooper takes a dive over the railing. Deep in the end zone. Cooper tracking this down against Swearinger again, and just can't quite get there. Just overthrown. Second and 10. Sixty eight of those yards came on the first touchdown of the game. Tebow and Clifton gathers buries Jeff Demps. Huge man Clifton gathers is a huge man six foot eight was out at practice Thursday. He, you look at him and you can't take your eyes on top defensive end right there. Actually really does get blocked on the play does he. Must have been a missed assignment. You only got three defensive linemen, and nobody blocks Clifton Gathers. Can't I don't know any, him. any of the Gathers family who haven't been yes, huge. I know. Beginning with Jumpy. Huge stop by this defense. South Carolina has to have it. Third and 13. Tebow flips it right side. Out on the edge, and that'll be a fourth down coming up as Darian Stewart, number 24, gets to Jeff Demps. Now, Caleb Sturgis has hit two over 50 this year. He hit one of 56, one of 51. And let's see what yeah, it's right at, that, has in mind. right at that point. Yep. You know, where, you know, we, we saw him kick that one would have been good from 60. This, this is, uh, if they go for the field goal, it appears they will, 52 yards. Is Sturgis coming on or no? Well, I think Urban is going to bleed the whole clock before he decides. He's got one timeout left. Now he has none. Florida has just used its final timeout. Well, as we said, it's a much calmer Tim Yeah, Tebow. right. <laughs> much calmer. <laughs>
Tim Brando in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer Tillman and I will get you caught up on all of the games, including Georgia Tech clinches the ACC Coastal will play for the title. And this is one of two touchdown passes thrown by Josh Nesbitt. Now let's get you back to Florida and South Carolina. Caleb Sturgis getting ready to come on. He's had a really memorable season for Florida against Arkansas. He had a then career long 51 yarder to start the second half. Nailed the game winner from 27 yards out and against Georgia shattered his own career high. He booted this one from 56 yards away. So two for two from 50. He's 13 of 16 under 40 yards and four of four beyond the 40. And even if he makes it here, this is a huge stop for the South Carolina defense. Remember, the fumble led to great field position, almost had the touchdown pass to Riley Cooper, long by about a yard. Great stop by the South Carolina defense. 52 yards for Sturgis. Oh, my goodness. Plenty of distance. No good. It becomes an even bigger stop with no points out of this. Absolutely. Just off the left post. Just wide of the left post. Mm. There's a certain degree of equanimity from the head coach. Well, 52 yards. You yeah. know, those are not automatic, and you're not going to make them all. No one makes them from 52 yards. Your margin of miss, your angle of miss is so small. First down and 10. Garcia Maddox is split off to the left. Fullback is in DeMarco. Garcia runs and picks up about four. Uh, let's uh, take you all the way back to the first quarter touchdown drive. In it little bit of everything. Remember the third down pass where the push for the first down got it going and then a perfect throw from Garcia to Jeffrey and then the fumble recovery near the sideline. Everything went well on that drive for South Carolina. They need one like it and, and run out the rest of this half because remember Florida gets the ball to start the second half. Maddox limped off series before last and he's now back on there. Second down and seven. Blitz coming. Garcia, good protection. Left side. First down, South Carolina. It's caught by Mo Brown at the 48 of Florida. Gain of 14. Well, no backing off the blitz for Florida. Charlie Strong is rotating his linebackers. Spikes and Stamper and Hicks are coming in. This time another blitz, but a perfect call to the outside. Quick pitch, good blocking inside, leave the outside guy go and throw it. First down and 10. Out of the spread this time. Garcia backs up, comes right. Chased. Throws it away. Second and 10. Dustin Doe defending. It looks like one of the offshoots to me of the Brandon Spikes discipline one game miss is that Florida's gotten comfortable playing more linebackers in the game. They are rotating much more freely at the linebacker spot than they used to. Spikes used to hardly ever leave the field. Right. And now they've got a rotation that they feel comfortable with and they're playing four, sometimes five different linebackers. Now you've got Doe in there, A.J. Jones, Stamper, Hicks. Second down and 10. Quick setup. Left side. One on one to Alshon Jeffrey. That's another South Carolina first down. Let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Vern, C.J. Spiller became the first Clemson player to throw for, run, and catch a touchdown in the same game as the Tigers rolled over North Carolina State. They sit atop the ACC Atlantic. Now, Colt McCoy of Texas, modest numbers, 23 of 34 for a couple of touchdowns and 181 yards. And Mark Ingram will be on display tonight in Starkville. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. It's first down and 10. Carolina here. South Carolina Gamecocks trailing by 10. Oh, wow. As Maddox carries, runs into A.J. Jones and then Ryan Stamper there to help. 
Same veer play. Hmm. Two to the line. Oh boy, was that just leverage that time inside by Stamper? Planted his feet and took him on. Stamper with uh, two interceptions in each of the last two games. He had gone his career at Florida without an interception to those two. Second down. Garcia with time comes out and it's caught by Barnes and he moves all the way down to the 11 yard line. 20 yard gain. Well, everybody did their job, including Brian Maddox on Spikes. Watch number 10 right here take on Brandon Spikes. He clears the lane by taking Spikes out of the play. Spikes is down. That makes that throwing lane easy for Garcia to take the thing. You know, you wonder, as good as Florida, if you see the catch right there, does rushing with four guys and three guys, I wonder if Charlie Strong's going to think twice about calling off the blitz. I mean, it, it, it seems like they're handling the blitz with the short pass. Now, South Carolina has called time. You see, they've passed four times and rushed twice on this current drive. They use their final timeout with three minutes to go. Important drive for South Carolina. They trail by 10. You have been brought here to learn the ways of the ninja. Make us proud. Our way is the only way. You are not my family. Ninja Assassin. Three minutes to go, opening half, 17-7. Significant drive now by the South Carolina Gamecocks. They look at a first down just inside the 12-yard line. 17-7. Jeffrey, top of the screen. There's Mo Brown hustling out to put three wide receivers on the left side. Saunders, the tight end, to split wide right. Garcia with a change. This is where Steve loves to get fancy down here. Little quick screen. Jeffrey gets a couple of blocks and is tackled by a triumphal to Florida Gators at the nine yard line. Led by Dustin Doe, number 32, and Janoris Jenkins, number one. He's out at practice, Vern. One of the real treats of doing this job is getting to go out to practice and visit with a guy like Spurry. He walks over, spends 10 minutes with you talking pass offense, and says, I put in a couple plays that I saw Arkansas do well against. And one of them was a guy at the back of the end zone with a couple hooks right in front short. Let's see if they get it right here. Hook, hook, back to the end zone. Second down. Garcia chased. Brandon Spikes, he has to go deep in the end zone. It is caught, touchdown. How do you do? Wesley Saunders, number 88, over Joe Hayden. First touchdown of the season for the tight end who wanted the ball thrown to him more often. Well, this was a busted play created by Garcia. He dodged and unblocked Brandon Spikes and bought the time to make the play. And the play is being reviewed. Did he juggle that ball? That's the question. Here we go. Well, again. he did double catch it. I will say that. He juggled it once. Watch him double catch it. But then he gets his right foot down. I, I'd be surprised if they overturn that one. Original call I, touchdown. I, although I have been surprised before. I don't know if you remember. I do slightly remember. <laughs> oh, where he does this? double catch it. But it, does he have the foot in when he catches it the second time? It's a hairline. 
Doyle Jackson is the replay official, retired SEC referee. No doubt he double catches review, it. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The touchdown. I think he does. I think he has that foot in. And what a job by Garcia and the tight end against the smaller corner. Now think about this. Kenny Miles fumbled at midfield. Yep, 10 minute mark, right? Yes. Urban Meyer's team took over. They could not get uh, inside the 30. Missed 52 yard field goal and then this lengthy drive again by South Carolina. The extra point is up and good. 65 yards, eight plays, took just under four minutes. Well, you'll see it was just going to be a lazy hook by the tight end to occupy people right here. Really no problem until Garcia gets outside of the pocket breeding spikes. Watch spikes come clean. Inside right there, beats him. Now everything happens. You get the tight end going to the back of the corner. He's got the size advantage, and he takes advantage of it. Whoa, spikes coming in on a stunt. And from there, Garcia going to his left, puts it as well as you could to the outside. Steven Garcia looked at the bench and pointed at the old ball coach. <laughs> and Steve says, just how I didn't draw that one. <laughs> oh, is he fun for this game. And Vern, as you said, what could have been 24-7 turns into 17-14 going into halftime if South Carolina can hold that Florida offense. Here's the boot. Adam Yates taken by Brandon James down to the 26. Antonio Allen, number 26, made the stop. How about when we had Eric Norwood and Mo Brown talking to us yesterday? I, I threw a question at him that I knew would get him riled up. I said, so you think you can beat these guys? And they stared at me like I was from outer space. <laughs> Quite true. <laughs> Quite true. Eric Norwood came back. First, he wanted to get his degree. First, in his family to accomplish that. He'll graduate in December. He's also an All-American. Here's Tebow running. And Tebow with a first down out to the 40-yard line. Keep in mind that both teams have used their allotment of timeouts. Garcia gets outside, going to his left, puts it right there. And the point you made about the height differential is certainly obvious there. 6'5", Saunders over 5'11", Joe Hayden. Underneath, the pop and the incomplete pass intended for Hernandez. And it was Eric Norwood, number 40, who was there to disrupt things. Second and 10. Empty backfield. Hernandez starts right, comes back, sets up left. Three-man rush, Tebow under pressure. Pulls up, drills it deep. He's got a man open. Diving try, it's incomplete. Intended for Deontay Thompson. Watch the All-American go against the All-American. Number 40 is in a spy technique against Tebow. Tebow comes out. Here comes number 40. Uh-uh. Tebow goes the other way. This time he doesn't get the completion. That's best against best right there. Third and 10. Three-man rush, time called before the snap. No timeouts left. 
previous play is under further review. Deontay Thompson's catch on the sideline is under review. Mm. Catch or no catch would probably be a way right. better way to do it. Here's the toss from Tebow to Deontay Thompson. Looked like it hit the ground. Yeah, the ball was moving a little bit to me on this one. Whether it hit the ground. Oh, yeah, it right did. There. It hit the ground. Yep. And I don't want to tweak anybody, but on my high def monitor, that <laughs> ball hit the ground. Well, if you can watch it on high def, it helps a lot. What do you think? Doyle Jackson called upon to review this again. Again, the original call was incomplete, and uh, we're back to the to the old saw you know, about thing, indisputable you know, the, visual and evidence. And Vern, the side judge, was right Absolutely. on the play. He was two yards away After on the review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. It's an incomplete pass. Yep. Third down. Bobby Morrow, the uh, side judge, with the call. Right there. Perfectly positioned. Third and ten. Seventeen fourteen with 92 seconds to go. It's been mostly a three-man rush with Eric Norwood in the spy position for Tebow. It's a three-man rush again. Tebow across the middle. Red Hopper almost picked off down low by Stephon Gilmore. It'll be fourth down. This ball was poorly thrown by Tebow. It was low all the way and a one-hopper and even a baseball pl player like Cooper couldn't scoop that one up. Chaz Henry on to punt for the first time. Here's a footnote last week against Vanderbilt. He had two punt returns against him. First two returns of punts this year. Total of 13 yards. Alex Washington returned one for six and one for seven. Here's Henry. High, deep, fair catch at the 16-yard line. Well, you know, it all started with about 10-15 to go in the second half. South Carolina's made a couple first downs, and then the fumbled handoff, and all of a sudden the game can get out of hand quickly. The deep ball to Riley Cooper, inches long. The field goal inches wide and all of a sudden instead of 24 or 20 we get a chance for a comeback and that's inches in a game of inches broke south carolina's way here at the end of this first half and yeah, they've got a first down and 10 no timeouts left 122 to go before the break 17 14 a three-point game this is a quick flip back to the left side and it's uh, Alshon Jeffrey with the catch. Gary, that is the 33rd play run by South Carolina. Huge number, a huge number for them. They need 65 at least. Coming up, the Geico Halftime Report. We'll take you back to our New York studios. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman scores and highlights as we get deep into this 2009 college football season. Maddox back in, he gets the handoff. Bolts up the middle, breaks the tackle, and then is caught from behind with a first down at the 33-yard line. A gain of 13. Same play, the ISO play right up the inside. You don't block the defensive end. He, Jermaine Cunningham runs himself right out of it to the outside. And Spurrier, I think, now would be willing to go deep to Jeffrey. Remember, this guy can jump up and catch the ball. Garcia back, gets good blocks. Flips it out right side, caught by the tight end at the 48-yard line. It's Wesley Saunders. Yeah, he started out being very conservative. 17-14 is not a bad way to go in at halftime, but with the big run, 
He gains a little confidence. Garcia rewards the play call. Spiked it. Well, there it is. I, I kind of felt the number for South Carolina in this game was minimum 65 plays because that takes that ball away from Florida. They've been averaging under 60 against the good defenses in this league. Obviously, Florida's in that upper echelon of defenses. They needed at least that many to make this a football game. Kenny Miles is on now to running back, number 31 on second down and 10. Here's Garcia from the corner. Hayden got him. Fumble. Joe Hayden, fumble and there is another fumble. The ball's out. Recovered by South Carolina. But the corner blitz, Hayden, comes clean from the left side. Yeah, and this one's on the quarterback, and this will be probably the last play of this half. You got to see the corner. They love to do it. Florida does it more than any team in college football. He had his back to it, but you got to peek before you turn your back. South Carolina for, fortunate to get out of the half. Joe Hayden with the sack, the fumble, the Carolina recovery. But we have reached halftime here at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, 17-14, as the Gamecocks have clawed back in and made a contest out of this one. Let's go down to Tracy, who is with the head ball coach. Coach, a huge second quarter there. What happened offensively and defensively? Well, our defense has stopped them a bit, and uh, we've been able to run straight at them and hit some passes. So we can't waste any possessions, though. So hopefully if we can play real smart. Maybe we'll have a chance here. 17-14, what's your message to your team going in? Oh, just keep playing like always. Keep trying to play smart. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Tracy. 17-14 at the break. And now let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. All right, Vern, coming up with the Geico Halftime Report, we'll tell you how Dexter McCluster ran wild over Tennessee, giving Ole Miss a big win and bowl eligibility. After this message of word from your local station. Florida Gators 19 wins in a row coming in. They're in a tussle with the South Carolina Gamecocks as we get set for the start of the second half. And moments ago, Tracy with Urban Meyer. Coach, South Carolina able to climb back in it in that second quarter. What happened there? Well, we just, uh, they were starting running the ball on us. They're running a little bit of read the side play in there. They're doing a good job. It's a good football team. We just got to come out and play. We came out of the gun. We came out of the game fast. We got to come out of the second, uh, third quarter real fast. Uncharacteristic for your defense over 200 yards. What changes do you need to make there? I think we just got to tell. They're running the ball on us, and that's uh, our team's good against the run. We just need. We're, we're fine. We just got to play really hard this uh, last 30 minutes. Thanks, coach. All right, Tracy, and they will get the ball to start the third quarter of play. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, along with Tracy Wolfson. 17-14, a 19-game win streak on the line. And we celebrate the Wounded Warrior Project, as we told you throughout, new uniforms with camouflage on the shoulders and the South Carolina Gamecocks wearing the core value names on the back of their uniforms in tonight's game. Adam Yates will kick off. Brandon James chases it. It's going to come out to the 40-yard line. So uh, kickoff coverage has been a problem for South Carolina throughout the year, and uh, that doesn't help. No, not a good field position. You think for the that's Florida a student analysis? There no, well, me? no, but, it, 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 but it's right. I don't know if it's a student. It's right. Uh, I think Urban was right. It, you know, it was only 66 yards that USC, South Carolina ran for, but it was an important set the table yards, and it kind of shocked Florida a little bit and opened up the passing game. You know, I think both sides went in the locker room saying, well, this is a real football game. It is indeed, and from the 40 now, Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators take over. Up the middle goes Tebow, and a second time today, 
He has been summer forced into a somersault and it's head first into the ground. Yeah, it looked like he hit the back of his helmet on the ground here on this one. Watch him get his legs taken out from under him. Did he hit the back of the helmet? Yes, he did. Wow. And I, I thought he was a little dazed getting up there. Understandable. Absolutely. If it's true, that's the second time in this ball game, and of course, the most celebrated concussion of the 2009 season when he was hit in the Kentucky game. Look at it. They're asking. They're looking in his face. There. Does Riley Cooper look like? I don't know if he's listening to the player looking into Tebow's eyes. Let's watch that. Second down. And off reverse, Rainey tries to get outside and does. And he is uh, hauled down at the 47. Well, everybody uh, remembers that hit against Kentucky in the third quarter. Taylor Wyndham came in. There's the uh, the sack, and then he hit his the back of his head on Marcus Gilbert's knee. And uh, tested every day for the better part, almost two weeks, and then did come back. And. Uh, play against LSU in that Saturday night game. You see the numbers before and after the sacks 15 since the concussion. None tonight however. First down and 10. Blitz coming. Tebow steps back. There's the first one. Clifton gathers number 96. Another stunt from the outside. Gather starts out at the defensive end spot, and then he comes in on a stunt. Tebow has nowhere to move. Comes in, there's the line, nowhere to go. And you notice, no one ran past the quarterback on this one. That's the goal. Everyone in front of the quarterback, downfield, no one open. Loss of nine, second and 19. Three-man rush by South Carolina. Tebow delivers it right side to Omarius Hines, number 82. His second catch of the night. How about trends, Gary, from the first half? Well, Urban Meyer said it right. It was a fast start. Tebow looked fast, throwing the ball, hit Riley Cooper, obviously, on that big one. And that's why Cooper has those big yards. He's the go-to guy. On the other side, Garcia started slow, but caught fire, 10 out of his last 13. No sacks until the white play previous in the football game. Third and 11 at the 48 of South Carolina. Three man rush again. Tebow waits. Nobody open. Now he goes deep. There's bumping down at the 10 yard line. Incomplete incidental contact. Yeah, you're not going to get that call. That was good coverage. Just again a three man rush with Norwood, the great linebacker with the speed and size, being the spy linebacker. Remember, just three inside. This should be protected, and it is protected well. But no one to throw to. Norwood up there, no one to run. Nowhere to run with Norwood standing right in front of him. Chaz Henry on the punt for the second time tonight. Gilmore with a fair catch. Colin called and taken. At the five yard line. So a fine, very effective punt from Chaz Henry. Yeah, that was a bust by Gilmore. You got to let that one fall and take your chances. The word is out. The blind side is a hit. Wow. We're in the middle of practice, Leanne. You can thank me later. It's an inspiring and extraordinary true story. I like that. Funny, hugely entertaining. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about. Sandra Bullock is a surefire Oscar contender. I'm going to have some fun. You're going to crush some people. The Blind Side shows future sports movies how it's done. Wow. What did I tell you? Sandra Bullock, The Blind Side. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday. We're back at Columbia, South Carolina, and another look, Gary, at the uh, tackle on Tim Tebow. Yes, up the middle, taken and spun, and his helmet back of his head right to the turf urban meyer asked tebow watch this you okay i'm all right he says and tracy wolfson telling us that he specifically said is the back of your head hurting right. no and then urban gave him a little wink worst field position to start 
in the ball game now for South Carolina at the six. Brandon Spikes back in. Overshifted defensive line, four down, and Garcia out of the spread. Here comes the blitz. Fumble. Ball is loose, and it is recovered by South Carolina. Garcia got there. Well, you're not going to make a lot of first downs and get drives by having these little miscues. Oh, the center thought yeah. Garcia was but underneath under center. him. Yes. That could have been a disaster. Jean-Pierre thought that Garcia had his hand underneath center instead of the shotgun snap. Could have been a disaster. How can you not so that know? Is, it happened in the Washington Redskin game late in the last play of the game. I saw it. Wow. You, Flags. So you're saying if somebody had their hand behind you, you'd know it. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm suggesting that. <laughs> Before the snap, false start. Number 68 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. That's Kyle Nunn with the false start. So uh, Lemuel Jean-Pierre with uh, a snap to a phantom quarterback. Second down and 15. From the one. Florida brings five. Pass incomplete. Dropped by Elshon Jeffrey, number one. Should have had it. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Last week, remember Julio Jones dropped that pass coming out in the next play? Safety against Alabama. Those little plays get you that yardage to get out of that end zone and avoid like a block punt or a safety or a tensional grounding in the end zone. And South Carolina lo looks at a third and 15 from their own one yard line. Garcia back. Here comes the pressure. He goes across the middle and it's knocked down by Carlos Dunlap, number eight. You know, uh, we saw Gether's size, 6'8", but Florida has Carlos Dunlap, their own 6'7 guy right here. and Watch him get his hand across and swat it down with his left hand that time. The MVP of the national championship game, defensive MVP, I believe, or maybe just the MVP, mm. but he was all over that pass. Now Lanning checks to make sure his heels are inside the end line. And he gets it away. Brandon James will have it bounce and take a lateral roll out of bounds. Oh, no, he picked it up. How about that? Now he gets a block from behind, and it's a lead. Oh, there's a flag. There is a flag, an illegal block in the back. Bring this one south. Chris Rainey. Had him lined up. All he had to do was get one more step upfield. Now, everybody thought, and I did, that Brandon James put his knee down. I thought he had his knee down on the play, so you got to look at that one first. Now, remember, the penalty is not reviewable. The knee down on the play is. Here's the penalty, and it was pretty Here obvious. The return. A legal block in the back. Number six on the receiving team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Hmm. Very close to whether his knee was down. Actually, it would be a break if his knee was down because the penalty is going to take it further back, I believe. Uh, time has been called. Urban Meyer thought they had a big punt return. We're cutting the cost of Yuletide, taking the bah humbug out of your budget, and amping up the merry in your Christmas. We're lowering prices on everything you need to make your home and the season more festive, adding more jingle to your pockets and more happy to your holidays. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Come in today and recycle any old Christmas lights, working or not, for three bucks off energy-efficient LED lights. I love the brown bag special. You know, it's incredible. You can get all this food for only $7.99. I know. Oh, we should take these to the tailgate party. Oh, good call. Yeah. Remember when we used to go tailgating I in sure college? Do. 
Man, you used to taunt the other team's fans. Yeah. Really, yes. really brutal stuff. Can I say? I tear them down, and I don't build them up. <laughs> Brown Bag Special. Sonic's got it, others don't. Drive in for a sonic size deal. Two Sonic burgers, two tots, and two drinks, all for just $7.99. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Hey, Tech! The only bull in your future is the one holding your chips! Good one, little B. Ah, I thought of that in the shower. You actually paid money for this thing, Bergwood? You're talking to me, dummy. Burn! The more you save on insurance, the more you'll have for football. Drivers who switched from Geico to Allstate saved an average of $473 a year. Are you in good hands? <laughs> the Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. Sonic, AT&T, and by DirecTV. We welcome you back to Columbia, South Carolina. Another look at the punt return by Brandon James. Gary? Well, we feel, or I feel, let's put it in my mind, I feel his knee was down and the play should have been dead right there. Which is really, what, five yards further back? Yeah. I'm surprised we're not getting a review on this. After the penalty of five, after uh, five yards marked off on the penalty, Florida does have it now at the 49 yard line. Wow. Tebow, handoff, big hole. Lot of room left side, out of bounds at the 39 yard line is Jeff Demps. Stephon Gilmore, number five, was there to force him out. Well, Demps and Rainey, remember. A year ago, how they again burst onto the scene and kind of changed that kind of struggling offense until Arkansas and they caught fire and they never slowed down has not been the same this year. Gain of nine, second, and officially one. Up the middle, first down at the 30. Emmanuel Moody, number 21. Well, the BCS top 10 in action. Florida leading here tonight. Alabama, Texas defeated Baylor. TCU at Utah, big one tonight in Fort Worth. Cincinnati won. Boise State leads huge. Georgia Tech, big winner. And that TCU-Utah game will be seen tonight on the CBS College Sports Network. Here's the handoff to Demps behind the line. Caught and dropped. Gathers again. Well, Gathers has been a monster in this football game. Again, it's one of those finesse plays where you're not blocking the end man on the line of scrimmage. You're trying to do the read, and it wasn't read well. Gathers does a good job of feigning outside to Hernandez and coming inside to make the tackle. Second down and 15 after the loss of five from the 35. That's Demps in motion wide right. Four man rush by South Carolina. Tebow delivers it and it's dropped by Jeff Demps. That might buy one reason that he's only caught five all year. Well, and that's the point of why Percy Harvin was so valuable to this offense. He worked as a wide receiver and was comfortable, obviously, with the ball in the air, but was so versatile to play running back at any time. You could see Demps and Rainey are more comfortable as running backs than wide receivers. If they don't gain a yard, it would be a 52-yard attempt from Caleb Sturgis. He missed one from that distance in the second quarter. It's third and 15. Three down, they bring five. Tebow steps up. Now pulls back. It's going to be holding against Florida. Cliff Matthews with the pressure, number 83. Yeah, and I think the holding was on Darian Stewart, holding. the strong number safety. On the offense. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. Stewart was the guy rushing. That's the guy that was held on the play. Stewart plays a linebacker type spot in the nickel package lined up right here. I believe he's the one that gets held as he comes around the corner. Yes, it was. 
Well, let's see. This is at the 37. It was Xavier Nixon, the new starter. And they will bring Caleb Sturgis out. He missed from 52. And this will be a little farther, 54. He's hit from 56 this season. And now, before the snap, here it is. Plenty of distance. Uh -uh. No! He's got a strong leg, but not accurate tonight. Well, remember, the five yards that cost Florida on the knee being down ended up being a big five yards in the drive. Which sounds better, Sierra on this? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Or this. Oh, wow, man. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. I mean, what is this? That's a cell phone, too. It's the new LG Chocolate Touch with Adobe Mobile. Oh, wow. Now let's compare that to Sierra herself. I like this one. The next best thing to Sierra herself, the LG Chocolate Touch, only at Verizon. Their hopes are as different as their headquarters. Their styles as unique as their strategies. For 200 years, the Hartford has helped businesses of all kinds protect themselves today and prepare their employees for tomorrow. Visit thehartford.com to learn more. And with the Hartford behind you, achieve what's ahead of you. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. This trail is awesome. <laughs> Jack Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Get ready for NCIS Unplugged. No! Found this in storage. Need to find a brontosaurus who knows how to use it. New NCIS CBS Tuesday. South Carolina Gamecock offense huddled around the ball coach Steve Spurrier. Steven Garcia had a very effective second quarter. Let's take a look, Gary, at our Home Depot tools to victory. Well, when you've got a quarterback making throws like this, You've got what Steve Spurrier wants, a guy that can distribute the ball around the field deep to the sidelines to his skilled receivers. But the added tool that Garcia brings to the offense is the scramble, the play when the protection breaks down. Steve gets the best of both worlds so far tonight from Garcia. And after the missed field goal, of course, it comes back to the line of scrimmage. So South Carolina gets it at the 37-yard line. Here's Garcia, quick setup. Goes left, he's got a man open. First down at the 49 yard line. The catch made by Wesley Saunders, the tight end, Ryan Stamper, with the catch. Tackle. Again, the middle linebacker is having to run with that tight end because they're blitzing the Sam linebacker. Bringing the linebackers from the outside, forcing the inside linebacker, a perfect call. I, you got to believe now. Oh, here comes a wild formation. A wild formation. Guys spread all over the field. Look at him bunched up bottom of the screen to the right. Three man rush, Garcia. And he's across the 50 and down at the 48 yard line. Jay Howard and Brandon Spikes with the tackle. Describe this one to me. This is all over the field. They got a Thank bunch you. bunch to the right. <laughs> right. Okay, now they'll look at that. Was it defended well? I think pretty well. Two guys in between forcing the quarterback draw was probably a check with me type play. If you don't like it to one side, you go with the quarterback draw to the other. And it's second down and eight. Florida looks like they might be blitzing. Stunts and the pass is batted down again. Ryan Stamper, number 41. 
I remember talking with Charlie Strong earlier in the season about Ryan Stamper, and he said he's so great. And uh, and and he we have him make all the defensive calls right and it allows Brandon Spikes among others to just play football. Yeah I think this might have been a drop ball on the play Spikes was right there and it's really through the stamper was right on the play that would have been nothing on the play third and eight midway through quarter number three 17 14 Florida with the lead man to man here they come again. Garcia pressure got him. Will Hill number 10 gets credit for the sack. Yeah Justin Tratow number uh, Trato number 94 also put pressure inside. Remember Will Hill is a safety. But there was pressure inside. It's going to come from over here at first and then Will Hill cleans it up. Watch a pressure come inside. And then Will Hill cleans up the play. Justin Trato, number 94, was a high school teammate in Ramsey, New Jersey, of Phil Sims' son, Matt. At Don Bosco prep, here's the punt by Lanning. Brandon James. Watch out. Watch out again. Great block by Hayden. Brandon James. Tackled at the 37 yard line. What a block by Joe Hayden to give him an additional 25 yards. Remember in earlier years, if you're a Gator fan, when the Florida offense would struggle, Brandon James was the guy that would turn the field upside down. This may be the punt return that jump starts the team. This will be out of the last five possessions for Florida, the fourth time they've had good field position. The last four, nothing. They've gotten nothing. 49 yard punt return by Brandon James, who was stymied for much of the season because they kept kicking away from him. Tebow pulls up. He's got Cooper deep. Cooper can't hang on. Incomplete. You got to make that catch. You're going for an undefeated season national championship. You got to track this one down and make this catch. Wow. Mm. Here's what we're talking again. The last four possessions right here. Two missed field goals. Remember that was after a fumble. And great field position after the kickoff to start the half. Here's Tebow. He'll keep it. And he doesn't get anything. Cliff Matthews, who uh, was not expected to play at midweek with a dislocated shoulder. And it's going to be third down. Cooper comes back on. Well, Tebow has missed six of his last seven, but I can think of Jeff Demp's drop right. and Cooper's drop. Look at uh, Norwood take away the pitch right here. Tebow wanted to pitch it, but he saw the black jersey of Norwood and he had to keep it. Third down. Burgess, the fullback, wide right. Will they play that spy technique again? Three man rush for South Carolina. Out of the corner, at the 30. It's going to be short of a first down. And let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim Brando. Vern, this will bring you a wow. Freshman Matt Barkley is going to be picked off by Stanford's Richard Sherman. He returns at 42 yards for the touchdown to make it 42-21. If USC loses, this would put them in fifth place, Vern, in line for the Poinsettia or Emerald Bowls. Back to you. Tim, that's not only a wow, it's an oof down. Fourth down, they'll go for it. They will go for it on fourth and one. Riley Cooper hustles over. Here's Tebow. Oh, I don't know. I don't think he got it. I do not believe he got it. He did not. How about that? Five straight possessions. Four of them in their own end of the field. 
and a stop and a stop and now usually Tebow is automatic and nothing and I think it was Eric Norwood number 40 in the hole was it the All-American and Adjaboy look at Norwood take it on an Adjaboy low but 40 right on numbers to numbers and he takes them on and stops him short Searching for something really fresh? Well, you don't have to sail around the world to get it. Just think Australian. Cruise into Outback Steakhouse and try a variety of delicious entrees made just for you and only $9.95 each. Like our juicy signature sirloin, aged and seared to perfection. Or with our tasty grilled shrimp on the barbie. Each served with our famous freshly made sides at just $9.95. At these prices, you can sail in every day. Live adventurous. Go Outback. Take him to the stadium? Big Bison's fan, huh? I am now. Hey, take a right. It should be faster. Whoa, buddy. Where's your ticket? I'm Carl Schaus. Okay, Carl Schaus. Where's your ticket? I'm on the team. They just called me up. Charles, you're leading on. Uh, Go. Stay a step ahead on the nation's fastest 3G network. Now get 50% off these Samsung touchscreen phones after mail-in rebate. When this shoe store added Aflac to its employee benefits package at no direct cost to the company, it was a perfect fit. Find out more at forbusiness.com. They've done it again. DirecTV will soon have the capacity for over 200 HD channels. Oh, for a second there, I thought you said 200. I did. Son of a... What is it with those guys? For a future of over 200 HD channels, call 1-800-DIRECTV. A ten-pin rivalry becomes a game of spare parts. Maybe you thought the only way to beat him is to mess with his head. With a head. A new CSI, CBS Thursday. Remember, they moved Carl Johnson into guard to get some... He's supposed to come real tight in Black Norwood. A little more weight inside, but watch the poor technique. He goes around and blocks the wrong guy leaving Norwood in the hole to take on Tebow one-on-one. -on -one. A busted assignment at the point of attack. A guy who was a tackle a week ago, or two weeks ago, goes to guard and blows an assignment. And you saw the back of uh, Eric Norwood's jersey. A reminder, this is a celebration of the Wounded Warrior Project. Thus, the uh, core values of the military expressed in various terms on the backs of South Carolina team tonight. And after the unsuccessful fourth down, and Norwood with the tackle, first down and 10. It was pretty well blocked, except for the key guy on the field. Right. Well, circle that one and the time. 5.03 to go in the third. Jermaine Cunningham makes the stop on Maddox. Looks like a pickup of three. 17-14. Florida has won 19 in a row, nine this year. Ranked number one, defending national champions. Expressed a goal in August of carving out the first undefeated season in Florida Gator history. They're in a battle here in Columbia. Second down. Big hole. First down. South Carolina. Huh. Maddox. Florida is getting a taste of their own medicine with the dive read here. This time Cunningham. Remember, Urban Meyer told Tracy, we must stop the dive. Oh, excuse me. It was outside Dunlap this time. Dunlap was the guy inside. No one blocks him, and he runs right by the dive play. Maddox with 74 yards on 13 carries tonight. Excuse me, it was Jay Howard number yep, six. I number thought it was six. Dunlap. I'm sorry. Garcia, right side. Jeffrey, that's a gain of nine. Janoris Jenkins first there. Major right second. Remember the last sack of the first half? It wasn't red. This time a corner blitz is red, and that's what you get. You get a big play when you see the corner blitz and do your job and you got to look for it against Florida you have to look for it 
and you get a positive play. Second down and one. Brian Maddox, the running back. Garcia in the spread. Comes right. And actually, the tackle forced him farther south and gives South Carolina a first down. Marky Anderson A.J. Jones were there. Well, I, I, you have to say, as we look at Steve Spurrier, the guy on the other side of the field calling the defense is Charlie Strong has not backed off his game plan. He decided he was going to blitz. He continues to blitz. They've made big plays with the blitz, but they've also opened up some opportunities with that blitz. First down and 10. Charlie Strong, defensive coordinator here at South Carolina for four years with Lou Holtz. Up the middle again, Ryan Stamper is up high on Brian Maddox. Well, they haven't had many breathers this year with the exception of the first two and at Kentucky. But you can see that uh, struggle in Death Valley, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Georgia was a, a kind of a laugher. They didn't look particularly great last week. This is their last SEC game of the season. They will play Alabama in the championship game on December 5th. Uh, and this is the, really when the pressure mounts on the road, trying to tie in a perfect season. You can feel the pressure in this football game. Second down, Garcia into the flat, caught. It's Jeffrey again. Third down. I mean, there's no doubt that the play calling by Steve Spurrier has adjusted. He's throwing all quick passes, anticipating the blitz almost on every play. Third and two. Jeffrey has caught six. Run blitz, fourth down. Stamper is the first there. And now Spurrier has a decision to make. Very interesting. Spencer Lanning's longest field goal this season, 47 yards. This would be a 52-yarder should he try it, and it appears he will not. They'll go for the first down on fourth down, fourth and two. Timeout, South Carolina. Oh, we just wanted to fill your Saturday evening with a little drama. At the intersection of life and learning, you could conduct neonatal research, invent computer technologies, connect people, launch new products, increase longevity, improve the environment, prevent diseases, discover cures, develop new fuels and energy applications in national labs that lead the world. At the intersection of life and learning, find direction at the SEC and the SECacademicnetwork.com. williams Bryce Stadium on a beautiful evening in mid-November here in Columbia, South Carolina. 102 to go. And it's fourth down and two, South Carolina. Well, you have to anticipate that Florida will crowd the line, crowd the line of scrimmage and bring an eight-man type blitz, a run blitz in there. Does Spurrier trust his quarterback enough to throw the ball to the outside? It's a long two and a half yards to mm. run this ball against a good rush defense. Maddox says he wants the ball. You see him hitting himself in the yeah. chest. Number two defense in the country, the Florida Gators. Charlie Strong. He's made his decision. Fourth and a long two. Brian Maddox, the running back, number 10. For the day, 79 yards. They'll line up in the eye. Play fake. Garcia rolls right. Nobody open. He's got to run it. He got it. Oh, my. What a play. Try 
tried to slip the fullback out in the flat. It was defended. Excellent job by A.J. Jones. And then Garcia does a Tebow. You can see the coverage. Great coverage on the fullback. That's where it was supposed to go. And then Garcia pulls a Tebow-esque play to keep it alive. And he got by 41, Stamper 51, Spikes. It's first down just inside the 30. Garcia, corner blitz, lobs it deep, and it's incomplete. Ashlon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, he's caught six tonight. Joe Hayden, Major Wright were defending. 29 seconds to go third quarter great play by AJ Jones you have to give it to him that is such a tough play to stop the fullback on a play action sliding out into the flat he defended it and then the athletic ability of Garcia kept it alive tenth play of the drive for South Carolina yeah and on this drive they've run the ball six times and passed a three for the day 27 26 run the pass balance second, second and ten corner blitz Hayden's threatening to come and now Brandon Spikes claims he was drawn offside by Kyle Nunn. Chisholm. False start. Number 77 on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Four offside penalties played a part in last, week, last week's game for South Carolina against Arkansas. That was a big one there from second and 10 now to second and 15. Barnes and Brown break wide to the left. That leaves Jeffrey bottom of the screen, wide right. Garcia blitz coming, sends it across the middle, gets a block, and it's inside the 25. Saunders. The receiver, a gain of 12. Uh, you get the feeling that Spurrier is calling every play expecting the blitz. Yeah. This is a wide, a tight end screen. Remember early in the game, he overthrew this and was almost intercepted. In fact, it hit off Mo Brown's back. Same play executed properly. Take a deep breath. That's the end of three. We've got 15 minutes of play remaining. We'll return to williams Bryce Stadium right after this word from your local station. Star Trek on DVD and Blu-ray this Tuesday. Buckle up. A new crew. What kind of training do you have? Fencing. A new mission. Ah! A new adventure. Ready? Star Trek. Own it on DVD, Blu-ray, and digital download this Tuesday. John Hancock, the future is yours. Visit findtheanswers.com. Red, black. When you want to get away. Both. Enterprise will pick you up and get you going to romantic weekends. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. What the hell is going on here? Don't miss Simon Baker in The Mentalist. Thursday, only CBS. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be homegrown. Can you hear it? Hear the American spirit. No matter where, no matter where. Arizona will take you there. Hello, you've reached Consult Nurse. How can I help you? If you need help finding a doctor or medical specialist or have a health-related question, you can count on Consult a Nurse. It's free and available 24 hours a day, providing a physician referral, answering your health questions, and keeping you abreast of free community health care programs. Thank you for calling Consult a Nurse. Consult a Nurse is a free service of the affiliate hospitals of HCA West Florida.
Qualified current Chrysler lessees can lease a 2010 Dodge Journey for only $279 a month. Popular demand on the Lottery Shopping Channel is our signature item, the Holiday Millionaire Raffle Ticket. You know, since we started this holiday tradition three years ago, folks just like you have won over $40 million. <laughs> really? Ooh, yeah, I got a little wet. Yes, and there's been over 21,000 cash prize winners. Wow. <laughs> oh, look, you're all choked up. Arms up, Kevin. Arms up. It's all right. Hairball. Hairball. <laughs> We're live with the Gators in South Carolina. Stay with 10 Connects after the game. Welcome back, Columbia, South Carolina. We begin the fourth floor to leading 17-14. September 27, 2008, Ole Miss in Gainesville. Fourth down, Tim Tebow stopped. Ole Miss won at 31-30. Last time Florida has tasted defeat. Earlier in the third quarter, fourth down, Florida. Tebow stopped. The ball went over on downs. Subsequently, South Carolina converted a fourth and two on Steven Garcia's scramble. And as we begin the fourth, the Gamecocks have a third and three at the Gator 22. Quick setup, Garcia inside, intercepted. Picked off by the Gators. It's Tretto. He scoots down the sidelines with a convoy in front. Justin Tretto with the deflected interception. The ball got to the receiver, I believe. Just let him a little too much. Marquis Anderson was the coverage. Watch the ball, it's just a little too much lead, and it bounces off Ar Marquis Anderson to Trado. Oh my. Driving, third and three. Too much of a lead to the wide receiver. Not an accurate throw. Remember, on that short of a throw, the receiver has no time to react. You gotta put it right in his step, chest. Here's Tebow. Left side, Brandon James. That looks like it might be a first down inside the 20. Justin Tretto. Well, how about the most unlikely guy to make the interception, Gary, and then the return? Well, it was a very aggressive play call. I agree with the play call. It was there. An accurate throw would have been a first down. An inaccurate throw in those great athletes for Florida. They move, Tratto turns around and gets one. Reminiscent to me, a few years back when Miami had an interception against Boston College to save the game and make the run for a national championship. It was Ed Reed who went the other way That's that right. time. And Justin Tratto with the interception. Wow. Coming from the right side of your screen, watch the ball is thrown sharply, but just about a foot in front. The receiver could have got a hand on it, but didn't get a hand on it. And it turns the field upside down. Second down from the 10. Here's Tebow with the pitch. Left side, Demps gets a block, dives. He's short, but he's at the one-yard line. Did not quite get the touchdown. You know what really strikes me when you watch this is a couple things. Just how hard it is to go undefeated. Yep. And how hard it is to knock off an athletic good football team. I mean, you almost have to do everything right to win a game like this. You make a mistake and it bites you. Pride Moore and Burgess, two fullbacks, are on the field now. The ball at the one first and goal. Tebow, touchdown, Florida. Yeah, he fumbled it, but he crossed the, crossed the plane. Once you break the plane, it's a touchdown. What a turnaround. Tebow crosses, and then his arm hits the ground, the ball pops loose. Yep. 
a 14-point swing or at, at possible or minimum 10-point swing with the field goal try that would have tied the game. And now, instead of an extra point for South Carolina at the north end, we've got Caleb Sturgis on trying to increase the Florida lead. Flag down. The extra point good if it stands. This one's taken a while to sort out. Here's Hubert Owens. That was no foul for illegal kick. That was no, 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 no illegal substance, no outside substance put down. Well, in SEC history, Tim Tebow now with 53 touchdowns. Well, you set yourself all up for a big play on third down, don't you? The ball is thrown out in front. Mo Brown does not get even a hand on it. It really hits Anderson and bounces to a Florida football player, and the field just flips. A 53-yard interception return sets up this one-yard touchdown dive. Florida by 10. Can you bring a dinosaur back to life? Hollywood could only fake it. What 60 Minutes dug up could be the real deal. Is that a blood vessel? This is a blood vessel. On 60 Minutes, Sunday. It's easy. It's the money you could be saving with GEICO. Who's watching? It's right here. It's easy. It's the money you could be saving with GEICO. And now, it's time for our GEICO Game Recap. And we recap the game on this Wounded Warrior Project Day. Riley Cooper opened the scoring with a 68-yard touchdown catch from Tim Tebow, 7-0. Emmanuel Moody got his first touchdown of the season in the second quarter. It appeared Florida was in control, but uh, Maddox got a touchdown, and then this great catch in the corner. Wesley Saunders, the tight end. Florida's defense yields 14 points in the third quarter. This was Tebow on fourth and one. No. And then the biggest play of the night and perhaps the season with an undefeated season on the line, a deflected interception by nose tackle Justin Tratto. Returned it 53 yards to set up this one yard Tebow touchdown run. And Steve Spurrier who won 122 games as the head coach of Florida in agony now because his current team trails by 10. Wow. Steve was out on the practice field on those slants Thursday asking Steve Garcia to hand the ball to the receiver on the slant. He said you don't need to fire that ball. Just hand him the ball as he slants in. That ball that thing happened so quick. Mo Brown never got a look at it and never got a hand on it. Caleb Sturgis this one will come out to the 40 yard line. It is out of bounds. And while they set the ball, let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. 
Vern, a recurring theme for Iowa is coming from behind all year. Down by 14 with 11 to play. Look at this. James Vandenberg to Marvin McNutt. 10 yard strike that ties it to make it 24 24. They did not score in overtime. Ohio State does have the ball with a chance to win it and go to the Rose Bowl in overtime. We'll keep you posted. All right. All right, Tim, thank you. The gutsy football team, Iowa, isn't it? Yes, they are. They, they just finish every football game. They might not be the most talented football team ever, but they finish games. Ricky Stanzi out, the quarterback, and despite that, they go into. Uh, the horseshoe and they're playing well. First down and 10, South Carolina. Here comes the blitz again. Garcia nails again. Jay Howard, that's the third sack this evening. They just keep bringing it. They are not going to stop tonight. No matter how many times you wonder how many times they will keep doing it, they just keep doing it. They, they are bringing five people on nearly every play. That time, Jermaine Cunningham peeled with the tight end, and Jay Howard was the guy to kind of come off the edge and make the play. Garcia sacked three times. That's a loss of 10. Second and 20. Three-man rush this time. Little flip out to the right side to Maddox, and he is knocked out of bounds at the 34. Well, big play of the game. The interception by Justin Tretto. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Now watch, Garcia's only going to throw this ball about eight or nine yards. You have to throw it softly. The receiver does not have enough time to react. He barely sees it. It whizzes by him. Mo Brown hits off a player, and Tretto's got it. That's one of those, used to be the old saying, Throw him an egg, not a rock. Throw it soft enough where he can catch the egg without breaking it. 53-yard return to set up a Florida touchdown. Third and 18, Garcia steps up. They've got him for a fourth time. It's Jermaine Cunningham. Came into the game with five sacks. He picks up number six. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, he gives that low body. He's got that low stance for Cunningham. Not a lot of target. Look at how small of a target out here as he comes around the corner. This time only a three-man rush. Gets one-on-one -on -one outside with Erickson and beats him. Oh, what a backbreaker it appears, that Tratto interception. Was. I always say about Florida, it, it's a kind of a backward saying. They have so many ways not to lose a game. Mm. You know, good man coverage, sacking the quarterback, Tebow gets hot, punt returns. And this one off the uh, left side of the field on one hop. Brandon James avoids the first tackle, skips out of bounds with the ball at the 46-yard line. Eric Norwood was there to defend on special teams. 11.07 to go in the ball game. Gators by 10. Mr. Palomalo? Yeah. You need any help? Mm-mm. You want my Coke Zero? Nah. Really? You can have it. Coke Zero and okay. a smile. Coke brand manager. Coke Zero stole our taste, and they are not stealing our commercial. Hey, that was for me. Is he coming? Uh, Is he coming? Uh, <laughs> Coke Zero has a light. Have a Coke hey, Zero has a light. Hey, kid. Da, 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 da. Droid. Does your phone surf the web? Does your phone surf the web with the speed and power of a pro surfer at Pipeline? Does it bring you the web in all its glory, in all its intended pixels, allowing you to reach the farthest expanses of its universe, deepest depths of its oceans, without getting as much as a grain of sand in your shorts? Droid does. Wave shredding web speed. In a world of doesn't, Droid does. What makes a Hershey's bar with almonds pure? Pure happiness. Pure delight. Pure delicious chocolate with almonds. Pure Hershey's. Now, more than ever, you want to keep your loved ones safe and secure. Give them the gift of financial security from New York Life. We've been protecting families for over 164 years. New York Life, the company you keep. 
The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero. Verizon Wireless. Hershey's. And by Red Lobster. Welcome back to williams Bryce Stadium near the campus of the University of South Carolina 24-14 aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by DirecTV. South Carolina's football team, especially their defense, can't start feeling like this crowd is feeling right now. The crowd is down. Yep. This South Carolina defense has to do something to get this football team going or it's just going to drift away from them fast. They just feel the emotion flow yeah, out of the stadium on Tranto's interception. Here's Tebow against South Carolina. And again, he had seven in that uh, big win here two years ago. Here's Tebow sidearms it out to Brandon James. He was caught and dropped for a loss. Uh, let's go back and check in with Tim Brennan. Okay, Vern, a 26-year-old former MLS player, Devin Barclay, hits this 39-yarder in overtime to send Ohio State to the Rose Bowl and a guaranteed share of the Big Ten title. Back to Vernon Gill. All right, thank you, and congratulations to the Ohio State Buckeyes. On second and 11, Tebow caught and dropped. Third sack tonight. That's 25 for the season and 18 in SEC play. Clifton Gathers again. Shag Wilson came in late, but Gathers is having a great football game. Lines up right there. Watch him come inside. Does not go for the handoff. Turns Tebow back right in to number 16, Wilson. Third and 18. Well, this is uh, the fourth straight game without a takeaway. It's never happened since Steve Spurrier arrived here in 2005. Third and 18. Inside pitch, Hernandez. And he gets to the 50, so the punting unit will come on now. Yeah, that's both sides saying good on this one. Yeah. There's no way with Urban Meyer is going to let Tim Tebow throw one off his back foot right now and throw an interception. He's right now says, I got a lead, 10 points. I've got a good defense. I'm going to pitch it up front, and I'm going to punt it. Chaz Henry on to punt for the third time tonight. First two not returned. And uh, Stephon Gilmore calls for the fair catch. So for the season, Henry's streak, uh, well, it doesn't continue. It was interrupted against Vanderbilt when two of his punts were returned. But boy, has he been a weapon for Florida. John Hancock, the future is yours. Visit findtheanswers.com. Our bottom line is not looking good. We're losing customers left and right because DirecTV has the best HD picture for any flat screen. And it's in full 1080p. Look around. Someone at this table will not be here next week. It's me. <laughs> Going to Barbados, folks. Good luck with that whole DirecTV HD thing. Sounds hard. See you later. Switch from cable and get the best HD picture on your flat screen. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Now's the time to get more choices. Now's the time to get more of the seafood you love. Now's the time to create your own seafood feast at Red Lobster. Choose two or three from ten selections. Classic favorites like steamed crab legs to new creations like wood-grilled shrimp with garlic cream and parmesan or tender salmon with a sweet maple and cherry glaze. Get more for your money when you create your own seafood feast for a limited time at Red Lobster. You were the one driving the Bentley, weren't you? Our good Samaritan isn't looking so good. They intentionally tried to hurt this family. New CSMAME CBS Monday. 
Now we celebrate the Wounded Warrior Project here in Columbia, South Carolina tonight. That's an easy segue to Saturday, December 12th, when all of us will be privileged to be in Philadelphia for the Army-Navy football game. Moved one week later in the season, always an emotional afternoon, and it'll be our privilege to be there for Army-Navy on December 12th. Right now, it's 24-14, and South Carolina has to start inside the 20 again. Yeah, and I wonder now if, if, if Charlie Strong finally calls off the blitz. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, the one formula that could cause a loss still in this game is a quick score. If it's going to be a score, it should be a seven-minute score. See what he's doing. Well, here's Garcia back. He's in trouble. Got him at the seven-yard line. It's Cunningham. That's five sacks now, most of them in this half. And you've got to give it to the, this, the, the design of this play. It's a safe blitz, but Trato right here comes out of it. So it's a four-man blitz that looks like more. Only four guys coming, but it's an exotic four-man blitz. And when you got Spikes and Cunningham and Dunlap, again, that's the value of Spikes. He's so versatile. Whistle before the snap. And now it's time while we uh, wait for the penalty call for our trivia question. Here's the question. South Carolina will finish with a 500 to better winning percentage for the sixth straight season. When was the longest prior streak? You are a huge. Ball start. Number 57 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. You're a huge Gamecock fan if you can get that one right. Well, one thing I will say about these late season swoons by South Carolina, yeah. they're against good football teams. Yeah. I mean, you play at Tennessee, at Alabama, and you play Florida, and they got to get rid of that bye on the 10th yeah. week of the season. Remember Nick Saban talked about how tired his team was two weeks ago. Can you imagine what South Carolina feels like 10 straight weeks of playing? Garcia from the end zone steps up finally lets it go down the sidelines incomplete it'll be third down well let's uh get more information from Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, they actually do get a breather next year. Troy will replace the bye, and the Gamecocks will get a week off in mid-October, giving them a chance to just catch their breath in the middle of the SEC stretch. Maybe that will give them a better chance of finishing strong. Yeah, and, and, and the schedule flips. More of the tougher teams at home next year. A lot of people coming back for South Carolina, so it should be their year to improve. I yeah. Know, a year to win a Anyway, this this conference, it's never anybody's year to just <laughs> <laughs> an eligible receiver downfield. Number 77 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. That penalty is, uh, correction, that penalty is refused. At third down. Well, look at this. 60 plays tonight, 30 and 30. The game was perfect until yeah. the interception. Draw play. Stuffed. Fourth down. A.J. Jones with the tackle. That leads us to Tim Brando in New York. Vern, somebody's got to win the Big 12 North, right? Well, Roy Helu is going to run it in from 14 yards out. It's his third touchdown of the day, a second rushing. Now Nebraska leads the Big 12 North with a winner-take-all matchup with K-State in Lincoln next week. A lot of people think Nebraska could match up well against Texas if that matchup happens in the Big 12 title game. I wonder, Gary, do you think? Well, Pelini is really good at spread defenses. Bo Pelini is an expert on defending the spread. Head coach at Nebraska, who was the defensive coordinator at LSU. From the end zone, here's Lanning with the punt. Brandon James at the 44. And he's tackled at the 30. Brandon James will return. He's an Sinclair. amazing player, isn't he, James? Yes. He, he looks so comfortable in punt and kickoff returns and so like a duck out of water in the regular offense. Brandon James, a weapon and just one of the weapons at Urban Meyer has rode through this 19-game win streak.
before you ever love it, the Nissan Altima goes through over 5,000 tests. No wonder J.D. Power & Associates ranked it highest in initial quality. The new Nissan Altima. Quality you can love. Nothing says love like beef. Try Chick-fil-A's Peppermint Chocolate Chip Milkshake. Available only for the holidays. Uh, hope I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity, oh, dental bills? Gadzooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, ho, ho. That's why we have Aflac. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Right, but what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Aflac! Affleck, we've got you under our wing. Rudolph's better, but what? now Blitzen's sick. Wow! There are very few ways to infiltrate a militia. You have no idea what you're up against. Welcome back to Columbia. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. G. Got a good idea. I we? wonder what it might be. <laughs> yeah, got a good idea on that one. <laughs> this is one of those rare occasions when all of us oh, are nice. unanimous. About as famous as that blocked field goal two years ago in <laughs> yeah. 2006. There's the uh, carry over the left side. Chris Rainey, number three. Well, uh, longest win streak in the conference. Alabama twice had uh, consecutive winning streaks of 28. Auburn in the early 90s won 20. Florida currently at 19, perhaps going to win 20 tonight. Alabama back in the early 60s with 19. If you're wondering, the longest streak ever. Go all the way back to the early 50s. Oklahoma under Bud Wilkinson won 47 in a row. 47. Here's the handoff to Rainey, and they were defeated by Notre Dame, 7 nothing. Well, Steven Garcia did a good job in this football game. You know, he, he, he made a couple mistakes, but he fought back. Tim Tebow has been uh, effective, efficient. Could have been a huge game with a, maybe two more throws that were a foot shorter. You know what? They've won 19 in a row. It appears they're going to win 20. He has not thrown for 300 yards or more in any of those 20 games. And he won't tonight. Right side, looks like it's going to be short. Let's go back and spend another moment with Tim Brando. Okay, Verna, have the finishing touches for Stanford. Tyler Gaffney from a yard out, capping a 55-21 defeat of USC. Listen to this. You, the most points ever scored against Pete Carroll since he started. Worst margin of defeat. The first loss for Pete Carroll, he had been 28-0 in the month of November. And to lose it to Jim Harbaugh that way, not pretty, Vern. Back to you. And nope. Remember when Jim Harbaugh took the job, Ooh. he right away something said something right at Pete Carroll and drew the line in the sand and picked on the bully, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He and he's did. beat him twice. He beat him twice. He channeled his inner Lane Kiffin. It's exactly right. You know, if you can't beat the best, you have no chance. Unnecessary roughness called against South Carolina. So it's first down Florida at the 10 yard line. Call was on Kenny Davis, number 94. to the 10 yard line. Antonio Allen number 26 makes the stop. Now let's see for the afternoon Tebow now he's been averaging 17 carries per game this year. Too many? No. No? Okay. <laughs> he's a running quarterback and yeah, that's what he does. Without Tebow running Tebow passing is not good enough. The interesting thing though think about this if it was an automatic playoff system where the winner of the SEC automatically got into the playoffs we wouldn't even see this much Tebow in this game. They'd be making sure he doesn't get hurt for the playoffs. Yeah, there's Rainey around the left side out of bounds. I'm just thinking about the number of carries. I know you remember this. 
when John McKay was coaching O.J. Simpson. Oh yeah, Southern the ball's Cal. not heavy, right? Yeah, he was carried it 32 times, and McKay was asked, "Do you think that was too many?" And he said, "No, the ball's not heavy." That's right. He also lost 26 in a row at Tampa Bay in the NFL, and he was asked, "Are you? What do you think of the execution of your offense?" And McKay said, "I'm in favor of it." Famous quote. Third down, Tebow fakes the inside pitch, and he's in trouble. It'll be fourth down with 4.45 to go. Well, everybody kind of figured that this would be the call on this play. South Carolina handed to defended. Florida did not want to take any chances with interception. Remember that Mississippi State game when they threw one too many passes and got a return for a touchdown. It's a big stop, though. It still keeps it a football game. Two possession game. He's one for three. Both of his misses in excess of 50 yards. This one from 28. As the lay a game. Oh boy. And it's no play. It's no play. So he'll he's going to get another he'll chance. Get another kick. They, I thought they blew that thing off. I thought I heard the whistle. I saw that clock go to zero, I thought. Well, Urban Meyer doesn't have a thing to say to Caleb Sturgis. There's the clock right there. Oh, I was very, I thought the clock went to zero before the ball was snapped. I actually thought I heard a whistle, to tell you the truth, but I guess not. 28-yard miss. Oof, though. That's a big difference. My goodness. You remember how Caleb Sturgis won this job? Jonathan Phillips, the returning kicker, missed one of 37 against Troy. And uh, Urban Meyer said the kicking job is open. It might be again. All right, if you're a South Carolina Gamecock fan, you might get this one right. They'll finish with a 500 or better winning percentage. Here's the record, seven straight in 1928 to 1934, and the coach was Billy Laval. Second down, right side to the 29. Prado and Janoris Jenkins with the tackle. Yeah, he got pushed forward again right at the end of the play, very close to a first down on this play. Yes, he did. Yep. Touchdown and a field goal to tie. It has to be an onside kick to do it. First down and 10 from the 30. Corner blitz coming. Sixth time they've got him. And the whistle blows before Garcia goes down. Stamper and Will Hill collaborate on this sack. Well, this is the another exotic blitz. Even though they're bringing people, they're dropping people at the same time. So it's not that big of a gamble. It's a zone blitz type concept and not blocked very well at all. It'll be second down, 19. Garcia steps out, three-man rush, they drop eight, and that one's incomplete. It'll be third down. Intended for Wesley Saunders. One game left for South Carolina. They do get uh, an idle week, and then they take on Clemson. A very hot Clemson team. Yes, indeed. Third and 19. Of course, it's four down territory. So, you know, picking up half here would be a good strategy. Intercepted. Picked off. It's Joe Hayden. Another misread by the quarterback, Steven Garcia, does not account for on the flag route to the outside. You must make sure that corner who's sitting short 
doesn't bail back into the play. It's exactly what Hayden does. He sits short pre-snap, and then he bails back in the play. Garcia thought he had an easy pitch and catch, and what ended up being an easy interception. Yeah, Garcia very frustrated, as is his coach, Steve Spurrier. Joe Hayden with a terrific night tonight. Had a sack, forced a couple of fumbles. Now he gets the interception. And Florida hurries on for the quick snap. Tebow. Oh, jeez. Oh, brother. Gee. Oh, my. Hmm. South Carolina has two timeouts, 10 point game. Two minutes to go, and Tebow really gambles on this throw. I mean, really gambles, and he's lucky it wasn't picked off. A very poor play by your quarterback. And Darian Stewart was the closest man to it. And he had a guy in the flat for an easy, you yep. know, five-yard gain. Tim made up his mind, and that almost was a disaster. Second and ten. Up the middle it goes. This is Chris Rainey and uh, Melvin Ingram, number six. Got a surprise. Uh, Spurrier is not taking timeouts. Yeah, we've gotten under two minutes, and South Carolina has two remaining. Third and five. My goodness, neither, look at that. Neither team's made no. a third down conversion, and looks like Steve has decided that he doesn't, his team can't win. Yeah. There's the pitch left side. First down. And the tackle made by Culliver. Chris Rainey with the carry. It'll be first and goal at the five. Third down option play, the first conversion. The second half, nice block outside by Burgess on the arc block that time to pick up the first down, and that should be able to run out the clock. Yeah, time permitting, we'll go back to Tim and Spencer in New York. 20 in a row for the Florida Gators. Last loss, Ole Miss by 131-30. This their last road game of the year. They go back home, take on Florida International. And then the uh, rivalry game with Florida State University. We'll be there for that one. Look at the Mohawk. Grows back. It'll grow back. <laughs> you think? Just having some fun. For some of us, it. <laughs> nah, nah. 11 tackles, two forced fumbles, a sack, and an interception. Joe Hayden. Just an outstanding defensive back, outstanding quarterback for the Florida Gators. Well, anything but running your quarterback here, I would agree. Don't you don't know, pass or run, just no. hand it off. Right side. That's Rainey again. Gathers and Culliver with the tackle. So they survived their last road game. Yeah. Florida Atlantic, is that right? They've got Florida International, International yeah. and Florida State at home. Back to the swamp. Urban Meyer looks for Steve Spurrier. And Tim Tebow now 32 and 5 as a starter. He threw for 199 yards today. And it's now time for the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. It came on third down and three at the Florida 22. Quick setup, Garcia inside, intercepted, picked off by the Gators. It's Treto. He scoots down the sidelines with a convoy in front. Justin Treto with the deflected interception. 53 yards, and that set up a one-yard touchdown plunge by Tim Tebow and secured the victory. The final, 24-14.
Next week, we'll see you from Oxford, LSU and Ole Miss. For Tracy Wolfson and Gary Danielson, I'm Bert Lundquist, Tim Brando along after these messages. You've always had them, dreams. At the Hartford, we've helped you seize them for over 200 years, protecting what you have today, preparing you for tomorrow. Visit thehartford.com to learn more. And with the Hartford behind you, achieve what's ahead of you. The Hartford, insurance, investments, retirement. Before you ever love it, the Nissan Altima goes through over 5,000 tests. No wonder J.D. Power & Associates ranked it highest in initial quality. The new Nissan Altima. Quality you can love. So, how was last night? Just a sec. What's a 13-letter phrase for marriage proposal? I have absolutely no idea. Oh, wait, I've got it. He went to Jared. He went. He went to Jared. Jared has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores with thousands of loose diamonds and hundreds of settings to create your own one-of-a-kind ring. <laughs> I take it you told her. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. We're cutting the cost of Yuletide, taking the bah humbug out of your budget, and amping up the merry in your Christmas. We're lowering prices on everything you need to make your home and the season more festive, adding more jingle to your pockets and more happy to your holidays. Oh, yeah. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Come in today and recycle any old Christmas lights, working or not, for three bucks off energy efficient LED lights. Welcome to TIA Craft College Football today. Tim Brando in New York. A reminder, tonight on CBS, it's a lineup filled with drama and mystery, beginning with NCIS, followed by CSI New York and 48 Hours Mystery. That's all coming up tonight on CBS. In the game you just saw, Florida held off South Carolina 24-14. I'm joined, as always, by Spencer Tillman. And again, it all comes down to that interception to start the fourth quarter. South Carolina was right there up until that point. Charlie Strong's Florida Gator defense is number one total defense in the entire nation. You knew you had to be flawless coming into this contest. The interception, the one lost fumble cost him in the end. Strategic error, not moving Garcia out of the pocket, but Steve Spurrier. Yeah, because it was a sack Absolutely fest the rest tough. of the way. All right, we'll be back with scores and highlights right after this. Papa's in the house. Papa John's wants to put a Wii system and a Wii sports resort game in your house. Order online at PapaJohns.com and enter for a chance to win a Wii system and the Wii sports resort game. Rated E for everyone. Papa John's is giving 300 away until November 29th. PapaJohns.com and Wii sports resort help make a fun family night in your house. No purchase necessary. Go to PapaJohns.com for details. Better ingredients. Pizza. Papa John's. Before you ever love it, the Nissan Altima goes through over 5,000 tests. No wonder J.D. Power & Associates ranked it highest in initial quality. The new Nissan Altima. Quality you can love. In all the years we've been coming here, I've never seen a storm like this. I'm right here. And I always will be. 
The new Love's Embrace collection from K Jewelers. Now you can surround her with the strength of your love. Give her diamonds in a design that captures the comfort found in each other's arms. One more reason K is the number one jewelry store in America. Don't let go. Ever. Every kiss begins with K. Get ready for TV's number one show. Well done. Unplugged. Grab your gear. Got a dead Navy lieutenant. Now they're working the case. There's more to this woman than meets the eye. Old school. Found this in storage. Just need to find a brontosaurus who knows how to use it. New NCIS, Ben. There are very few ways to infiltrate a militia. You have no idea what you're up against. New NCIS Los Angeles after a new NCIS Tuesday. Getting you caught up on today's action, Texas wins uh, their 10th time for the ninth straight season. And if Oklahoma State loses tonight to Texas Tech, then Texas will secure the Big 12 South. Boise State rolls against Idaho, 63-25, 11th straight win uh, over Idaho for Boise. Georgia Tech rolls against Duke and Josh Nesbitt connecting here with Stephen Hill, a 32-yard strike. That would put them up 28-10. They trailed 10-0 at that point. Jackets clinch the ACC coastal title and spot in the ACC title game. Stanford blows out USC. Matt Barkley is picked off here by Richard Sherman. He returns at 42 yards. Listen to these here, these benchmarks for Stanford. Uh, this marks the worst loss for Pete Carroll's tenure. Stanford uh, running back Toby Gerhardt rushed for 178 yards. His first loss, Pete Carroll's, in November. He had been 28-0 in his regime there. Unbelievable. Iowa and Ohio State went to overtime for the chance for the Roses. One last chance in overtime for the Hawkeyes. Vandenberg's pass is picked off by Anderson Russell. And then the 26-year-old MLS kicker for Ohio State, Devin Barclays, 39 yards, sends Ohio State into a guaranteed BCS spot in the Rose Bowl, and they secure at, le uh, at least a share of the Big Ten title. Wisconsin can get a piece of that title, but loses the tiebreaker, and Michigan's got to beat Michigan State now to be bowl eligible next week. Clemson hasn't won an ACC title since 81. With this win today, 80-91, and if they get this victory next week against Virginia, they'll be playing in the ACC title game. They'll play the Cavaliers next week. Boston College does beat Virginia to keep their chances alive in the in the Atlantic, 14 to 10 over Virginia. And Missouri beats Kansas State today, 38 to 12, but they're still in the battle for the Big 12 North. They get Nebraska and Lincoln next week. The Huskers took care of Kansas today in Lawrence, 31 to 17. Well, be sure to tune in next Saturday for the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Number eight LSU takes on Ole Miss. It all begins at three o'clock Eastern with TIAA Prep College football today. And the football action continues tomorrow with the NFL on CBS. It's regional action. Most will see the Bengals face the Steelers. It all begins at noon Eastern with JB in the game on the NFL today. A good one today. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.